Yamaha time is 20 past 12 this Friday lunchtime and uh, hello to you if you're just joining us. We're building up towards the start of the Senior TT sponsored by Standard Bank Offshore. Bit of activity down at trackside so let's rejoin Chris Kinley. Welcome down to Park Ferme. Well, uh, as you can understand, the uh, Classic Parade bikes are actually being scrutinized and put through at the moment as well. Some lovely looking machinery uh, sat here. Well, of course, we're going to describe all the action and hopefully uh, bring you all the noise of that a bit later on. But let's get this uh, the big one out of the way. It's the Senior TT. This is it. It's four laps. And if it's anything as good as the last race, uh, this should be uh, something else. I'm just having a little look around. Most of these bikes have been sat here for a few hours now. A uh, few of them with... Um, with umbrellas over the fuel tanks just for the fuel I can see uh, Adrian Archibald's bike being warmed of course Adrian uh, warmed uh, won the senior last year there's Bruce Anstey's machine right next to him under that nice uh, Taz Suzuki awning Ian Locker's bikes there all the bikes are here ready to go and I would say it's, if anything it's probably got a little bit warmer so uh, the wind seems to have, I don't know we've I've moved round a little bit and coming more from as you look down Glencrutchy Road from right to left instead of like sort of right down the middle to the left and then sometimes going the other way. It's now more generally going from right to left across Glen Crutchery Road which will give them a bit of a sort of a help uh, across the mountain. But as you can understand with their uh, 20 let's try and work this out, 28 minutes is, is that right? No it's not is it? I don't know yet. 23 minutes, thank you Tim O'Hanlon, spot a timekeeper he can get the, the time to work down his head straight away. 23 minutes away uh, from the start of this race. It is a little bit quiet down here of course. Bruce and there, Ryan and of course John's still probably in the press area uh, giving various interviews to all the media around the, around the world but a uh, good crowd again watching the production 600 race some frenetic action in the pit stops as well and I'm just looking to see who's going to have the camera on the bike this time I think it is Richard Britton's machine is Patio Kane Suzuki uh, yes it is as well now then what have you, what's that just fired up there I think that's an MV it is yeah lovely MV uh, just actually uh, starts up they can hear that in the background that's giving you a nice bit of background noise there there you go have a listen to that Absolutely beautiful machine as well. I love the old Vincent here as well. Listen to that. Listen to that. Abs that's what you've got to come a little bit later on after the Senior TT. Then uh, the, a lot of these bikes will be down at Balloon tomorrow. So if you don't get to see them today, if you're often about doing something else and you're down at Balloon tomorrow, those uh, bikes... Um, we're going to be doing parade laps after uh, every race down there for land, which are three races tomorrow. Uh, let's move in and have a quick word of young Martin Finnegan, if I can. Actually, he's got the spanners and the screwdrivers in the hand. Went okay, didn't it, the Prodigy race? Yeah, it wasn't too bad, Chris. Um, I'm not very fond of riding in the damp, and I just couldn't sort of get my head around the start. And we were working all night trying to build, a, build the engine up, and we ended up having to use a production engine this morning for the Formula 1, so... I think I'm a bit tired, so I had to get a power nap there between, between that <laughs> Bit of a power sleep, but yeah, power nap, that's what they call it. So what are you expecting from this race? I think it's got a little bit warmer, hasn't it? Yeah, it feels the temperature's creeping up a bit, so hopefully it'll be dry enough for full slicks and just try to get the head down from the start. Andy McLadry says you're all action into Ramsey Hairpin. I think Andy's just afraid. He's been away from it too long. <laughs> it certainly has, but what are you looking for in this race, Martin? I just uh, hope I got a good top ten finish, Chris. OK, mate, OK, I know you've been working hard. You actually look knackered, actually. I feel it. <laughs> OK, Martin, thank you very much for talking to us there. Uh, the Sean Harris just, just gone through as well. Uh, Sean had a pretty reasonable finish in the production 600 that just gone. Finally got to finish his mechanics. I said it's nice to be able to do a fuel stop, so it's uh, quite good that Sean got a finish there as well. A bit of a smile on his face as well from the stager here, but uh, let's get a quick word with Sean. He got a finish, mate. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sorry for my sponsors for finishing so lowly, but I've just spoken to Stuart Black from Black's Bikes, and he's as happy as a pig in the proverbial to have me here, and I'm I'm smiling, I'm happy, it's just been a bad year, next year's another year, it's just around the corner, about to go out on the Wilson and Collins ZX-10 now, so I'll do the best again that I can for those guys, and uh, look forward to the future, I'm not saying I'm quitting, but what I'm saying is, next year's another year, and I'll be back and better prepared thing is as well it's a brand new bike the ZX10 and everybody who's got them knows they are because they're a new bike the five blades a new bike there's a lot of and the R1 of course there's a lot of new bikes out there this year quite difficult to set up the ZX10 Sean no I don't believe the bike itself is difficult to set up it's we put a combination of stuff into it at the beginning of the week my head wasn't in gear because I was quite sick it's no excuse it's genuine um, so basically we had the bike going in the complete opposite direction to where we needed and we kept missing the sweet spot by X amount of millimetres each time and basically progressively made it worse then got it better then took a radical jump in the same direction which made it even worse again so effectively I'm going out on the motorbike this time that I've qualified but never ridden with the setup we've got on it we did a lot of work on it yesterday hopefully 
um, the intellect of our thought is correct. We'll find out in a minute once the flag drops. You know, I'll know by the lights, which is less than a quarter of a mile away, if the bike's going to be capable of being ridden semi-fast or not. So, you know, I'm just going to do the best job that I can for everybody that's supporting me here. As you always do. Yeah, I try to do my best and uh, enjoyed myself out there like too much in that 600 race. I was actually having fun and when I'm having fun, I'm not concentrating as hard as I could, which means I'm not going as fast as what I could. Um, being on the road with Martin Finnegan even made it even more fun because I was laughing, watching him smiling, watching him back it in the way he does in the corners. It's just the way Martin rides from his dirt tracking stuff. And You know, I was enjoying myself. Uh, if I'm guilty of letting my sponsors down for that, well, hey, I humbly apologise, but I've had a real bad week and I never, ever leave the Isle of Man with a negative attitude. I've now got a positive attitude, so it's just onwards and upwards. OK, Sean, thanks for talking to us. Cheers. Cheers. There you go, Sean Harris, of course, with uh, always some good thoughts and always good comments. Let's go back to the grandstand, the MCN grandstand. Here is a notice to all owners of domestic pets and livestock in areas adjoining the TT course. Please ensure that all animals are secure during practice and race periods. Yeah, sorry, Chris, it is me. <laughs> uh, jumping under me there like uh, somebody trying to get underneath uh, a rider at Ramsey Hairpin. I think it was Ryan, wasn't it, who pulled off the spectacular move there when Andy was commentating earlier on. Charlie Lambert here with the grandstand team. We've got an urgent message for Frank K to attend the race office. Will Frank K please attend the race office? Uh, we've also got a big pat on the back and a thank you to Barry MacDonald out at Balath Bridge who's collected £1,423 for the helicopter fund and that's from spectators in the Balath area. So excellent work, well done Barry MacDonald, that's much appreciated. We are just over a quarter of an hour away from the start of the Standard Bank Offshore Senior TT, so it's time for me to give you the changes to the official race guide. So if you're suitably poised on page 40 of the race guide, there are quite a number of changes to get through. And we're starting off with, who else but, number six, Ryan Farquhar, who will not be on a Kawasaki this time around, but will be riding a Suzuki. So Ryan Farquhar riding a 1000 Makadu Suzuki at number 6. Number 9, Chris Heath will be on a Honda. Chris Heath on a 1000cc Honda. Number 11, Nigel Davis, 1000cc Suzuki. Nigel Davis on a Suzuki. Number 28 is a change of entrant. It's Davy Morgan who's moved up from number 45, and he'll be riding a 750cc Suzuki. Number 28, Davy Morgan, moved up from 45 on a 750 Suzuki. Number 33, which is blank on the race guide, James McBride on a 1000cc Suzuki. Plate number 33, James McBride, 1000cc Suzuki. Number 36, which is also blank, Andy Wallace, promoted from number 77 on a 750 Suzuki. 36 is now Andy Wallace, moved up from 77 on a 750cc Suzuki. Number 39 is again a change of entry. It's Maria Costello. Number 39 is Maria Costello, on a 750cc Suzuki. Maria Costello on the 750cc Suzuki. There goes the klaxon for 15 minutes to the start of the race. We'll continue with the changes to the race guide. At number 45, it's not Davy Morgan who's been promoted, it's John Burroughs who in turn moves up from number 62. So 45 is now John Burroughs riding a 1,000cc Suzuki. 46, which is blank on the race guide, will now be Stefano Bonetti on a 600 Yamaha. 46, Stefano Bonetti on a 600 Yamaha. A change of bike for number 47, Alan Jackson. He is now on a Honda. Number 47, Alan Jackson, rides a Honda. Number 51, Fabrice Miguet, 
a change of machine is not on the R1 as printed, but will be riding the Voxan. You'll enjoy that one if you haven't seen it already. Fabrice Miguel on the Voxan. Change at number 55, Paul Owen is not a newcomer as printed. Paul Owen is not a newcomer as printed. Number 57, which is blank, will now be Tony Reckberger, who moves up from number 82. So 57 is now Tony Reckberger on a 1000cc Suzuki. Tony Reckberger on a 1000cc Suzuki. And 58, which is also blank, will be Umberto Rumiano. Umberto Rumiano on a 750 MV Agusta. Well, I said there were a few changes. There are still a few more to come. Number 61, Andy Jackson, change of machine, is on a 600cc Honda. 61, Andy Jackson, a 600cc Honda. Number 62, John Burroughs. That's now a non-starter because John's moved up to 45. So 62 is now a non-starter. John has been promoted in the order. Number 63, Geert Lambrecht, change of machinery, is on a 1,000cc Suzuki. 63, Geert Lambrecht, on a 1,000cc Suzuki. Number 67, change of entrant, is not John Krellin, it's Stephen Oates. Number 67, Stephen Oates, on a 1,000cc Yamaha. At number 70, where there's a blank, that will be Etienne Goddard on a 600 Yamaha. Number 70, Etienne Goddard on a 600cc Yamaha. Number 72 is a non-starter. Number 72, Noel Clegg, is a non-starter. Change of entrant at number 77. Andy Wallace has been promoted. 77 will now be the plate of Duncan Bailey. Duncan Bailey on a 600cc Yamaha. Number 82 is now a non-starter because Tony Reckberger has moved up the order, so 82 is a non-starter. And 85, which is blank, will now be Kevin Murphy on a 600cc Triumph Daytona. Number 85, Kevin Murphy on a 600cc Triumph Daytona. Two non-starters at 87 and 88. 87 and 88 are both non-starters. A change of machine for David Paradis at 89. David Paradis is now on a 1000cc Suzuki. 89, David Paradis on a Suzuki. And the final change to the published list is at number 90. Change of entrant, it is now Anita Buxton. Anita Buxton on a 1000cc Suzuki. So that completes the changes and also gives you the non-starters. The non-starters also include my lunch because it's such a rush between the two races. But in the meantime, I'll take a quick nibble and we'll have a short break. Whatever your needs, Sleepwell Hotels can accommodate you. With four great hotels, from the exclusive Claremont to the Chester House, Rutland and Regal, we're the largest group on the island. There's also loads to keep you entertained this TT, with a special pre-opening preview of Coast Bar Brasserie at the Claremont. Plus, catch all the fun of the new bar in the refurbished Rutland. Sleep Well Hotels, your TT hosts. Make your booking on 673636. Let Charlie have his lunch. Uh, <laughs> welcome back down to Park Fermi. There's Nigel Beatty, and of course uh, all the classic bikes are getting themselves ready in here as well for uh, this parade a bit later on, which is going to be a lot of noise and a, a lot of fun this year. There's Guy Martin, of course, there went very very well again. There's the Laxy Boys. Uh, Say so Nigel Beatty's there, of course. 26 actually, just getting no 26. Who is of course Andy Mars and on the bike care Yam. He's not got his rear wheel in just yet, so they're just probably waiting. He was actually telling me uh, on the mountain on the second lap, one of the Jackson lads that there's a bit of rain up on the mountain as well so hopefully uh, that's going to have blown it away and um, just have a look up onto the grid and uh, one bike up there so far and it's uh, well there's two bikes actually it's number 50 
who's Paul Dobbs on a ZX9 for New Zealand and Ian Locker's uh, CBR machine is on the grid as well that's number two so ooh, what 10 minutes to go to the start and there's only what two bikes up there on the grid there's Davey Morgan uh, we'll go down and see if we can get some more guys and girls to have a little word with actually as well Nigel Beatty's there actually we'll see if we can get a word with the Beats Master and uh, here we go he's the Renegade Master <laughs> yeah come on well, today you've not been uh, out this morning, so you won't know what it's like out there, but you're looking forward to this on the Rocket R1? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I could have probably done with having a run out this morning, because by all accounts it is a bit patchy here and there, and, you know, I'm just going to have to take that first sort of lap, sort of blind, really, you know, just go from the word that sort of people have said where it is a bit damp, but, you know, hopefully that was like an hour ago, so hopefully it's dried out a little bit more, but, you know, the first lap will just be a sort of have a look around and then sort of build it on that. Have you given the old man a bit of advice for later on? I'm a bit worried about that, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we, sh we should be all right. I mean, that, that bike's never never broke down once. It's always, oh, always, no. always finished, so uh, hopefully we can keep up the 100% record. You'd be going to bed with no tea if he breaks it, won't he, Nigel? Yeah, I don't think I'll be speaking to him for a while anyway. <laughs> all right, Nigel, you've had a great week, haven't you? So good luck for today. Yeah, thanks very much, Chris. There we go, and uh, there they go, the Renegade Masters. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's have a quick word with the young man here. I know it's probably not not sunk in about the production race yet, so I'm not going to ask you about that, but let's look forward to this one. The senior TT, let's hope your form now, hopefully, is back again. You can continue today. I just hope everyone goes okay. I'll just get stuck in, try and get a good steady ride. I've, I've got what I've came for this year, and anything else is going to be a bonus, you know. So if we can slip into the first six, we'll be well pleased. She's already told me off for putting the microphone under her face. She's a bit fierce when she's getting going, isn't she? <laughs> and she slags me off about the way I make my interviews, you know. But I can slag her off now, but <laughs> no, everyone, you know, say everyone went brilliant, and uh, you know, I'm glad to give Kawasaki, a, you know, a production win. Winston McAdoo, that's his first first win. He has been trying for years, and you know, to pull it off, is something special. Like. I'm just going to say that. Uh, You've had an awful week, but now this has all come good now for you. And that little sparkle's back in your eye again, and the smile is etched back on your face again, which wasn't on Wednesday, Monday, and all last week. Well, you know, it's uh, maybe I've got to get into a steady rhythm now on the big bike. You know, I had a few problems practice, you know, handling, but uh, I went out on Wednesday evening. I couldn't get my head around it after what all had happened. You know, it was just scundered, but hopefully now I can get stuck in there, say, so just get a steady ride and uh, go out have a couple of drinks tonight and enjoy ourselves just a couple well I'm riding tomorrow so I oh can't. yeah 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 okay alright Ryan good luck and I'll speak to you tomorrow I've speak to you before Ryan Falk on there of course and Karen as well uh, good interview he is Karen she always has a nice word as well and of course expecting their first baby pretty soon as well so lots of bikes being moved did I say as well again I did didn't I then all the bikes being moved uh, up onto the grid now and uh, there is Nigel Beatty all his lid on and stuff now uh, the boy from Laxey going very very well a good future Guy Martin of course another good ride for Guy today as well there's big hate is uh, Suzuki, his Kringle machine being warmed up in the corner as well. I'm going to have a little wander back in and see if I can find some more guys because you don't want to try and get in the way while they're getting ready as well. Let's have a word with Mark Parrott, actually, if I can, very quickly. Another steady ride, Mark? Yeah, it's steady away. It's just a, a bit of lack of confidence, really, with the damp conditions. Not a great number of them. Yeah, up through Glen Ellen first lap. Laurel, well, Ballacrain to Glen Ellen was a touch damp. A uh, couple of little slides, nothing big, but it's enough to just knock your confidence a touch. Especially on the production bike as well, you don't want any slide. Are you on slicks in this one, by the way? Um, I'm, I'm on slicks now, yeah. I mean, if it hasn't rained anywhere, it'll be bone dry. It'll be good conditions, apart from the high winds over the mountain. Did you spot any rain up on top in the, uh, for, in the first race? There's, somebody said there was a bit of rain up on top. Uh, I didn't notice any, no. I, I didn't go through any. It might have come down four after I got there. But, I mean, with the wind like it is, it should dry up quick. Should do. You've had a good week this week, haven't you? You must be really pleased. Yeah, it's uh, gone a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, if I can have a good run here, it might be top ten all week. We'll wait and see, you know, last race of the day. Just be nice to get back and uh, get a beer in for the boys. What about tomorrow down Castletown, though? Yep, yeah, down there tomorrow. I've got 600 in a big race. Um, see how it goes. It's just a bit of a rundown at the end of a good week. All right, Mark. Thank you very much for talking to us again. Cheers. Cheers. There you go, Mark Parrott there as well. I did nearly said it again then. And uh, let's have a little look around see if we can find anybody else. Now, that is the five-minute klaxon. And there's still a lot of bikes sat down here. It's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, they're just all chilling out and just taking it easy. And all the bikes are sat down here. Does everybody know that it's a quarter to one start? They could all be caught out here. I think somebody's going to have to uh, have a little wander around and tell all these guys and girls that it is a quarter to one start. Nigel Beatty's R1 gets the push up the hill. Alex Donson there, of course. I know there'll be people from Alex Donson. 
Donaldson's uh, area of the of the world, which is Valley, which is about 10 miles away from uh, the Port Rush, Port Rush, Port Stewart area as well. I'm going to have a quick word with Adrian as he walks up towards his bike, sees me coming and grimaces. Hello, Adrian. <laughs> Not having the best of weeks by your high standard, but you're getting finishes, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. You know, obviously we'd like to be a bit higher up, but uh, now the last race there was a bit slippy out, mm. you know, out to Glen Helen and a couple of moments there in the first lap, and that was just enough for me. Mm. Hopefully they'll have dried up for this race, because, of course, no treaded tyres on these. You're in for full slicks. I'm just looking at it there. Yeah, that's right. You know, and well, it was all right there in the last lap of the race, you know, so I'm looking forward to having a good run here. OK, Adrian, you've not got long to the start. I won't hold you up anymore. Thank you. Uh, Adrian Archibald. OK, let's head back to the MCN Grandstand. Setting the scene. Brought to you by Sleepwell Hotels, the island's largest hotel group. Catering for everyone. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> just uh, telling some of the guys, yeah, that's why he's up here. I was just telling the boys that it's a quarter two star. There's, there seems to be very laxy daisy about this. They really, really seem to be. Oh, the Renegade Masters. That's them. The Richard Britton bike air comes up to the top as well. Let's John McGuinness uh, just talking to Ryan as uh, there he. Uh, let's have a little look who else we can find round as well because we don't want to talk to the same people every time because that'd get a bit predictable. Ah, here's Richard Britton. Let's go and have a word with Richard actually as well. Uh, lots of front end chatter and lots of break and chatter. He's just about to put his lid on. Let's get that under the Oh, he's seen me coming and did it straight away. Ah. Yeah, a bit exciting going into Ramsey Hairpin, they were telling me in the production race. Ah, yeah, the front forks just wasn't right set up on it. Like, if I would have had my Super Sport forks in, but they would have been illegal and I'd been throughout, so but they were working fine, but nah, I just couldn't get them to work right, so I wasn't really bored, just wanted to finish. What about this What about this one, by the way, the, the senior? What, what about this, your, your GSXR Patsy bike? Uh, the bike's going really well. We had a wee problem in the... In the Formula One, there was a misfire in the, in the downshift. There was this, we found out there was a resistor burned out, or was making a connection and not making a connection. So we have it sorted now, and hopefully it'll work all right. But just want to finish, you know. It's very windy out there on the big bike. It'll be a lot more hard work. Okay, Richard, I'll let you go. Not long to go to the start. Richard Britton, thank you very much as well. And uh, I hope your good lady's a bit better, yeah. Yeah, she's getting out today, so. Hopefully get home tomorrow. See you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. So a smile on his face again that his good lady is uh, obviously getting out of hospital. So that's good to see. John McGuinness's R1 goes past me. So it is two minutes to go to the start of the Senior TT. So we'll hand you back to the MCN Grandstand. Chris, thanks very much indeed. Well, welcome back to the Grandstand and welcome wherever you may be listening. If you're around the circuit in your favourite place or maybe at one of the big congregating points such as Quarterbridge or Parliament Square or up on the Gooseneck, out at Balaf, wherever you are, I'm sure you've enjoyed the racing this week. And here we go with the Standard Bank Offshore TT. If you're listening to us on 1368 Radio TT on the Isle of Man in the United Kingdom or in Ireland, welcome to you as well. And as ever, a special welcome if you're listening worldwide, New Zealand, Australia, the USA, South Africa, wherever, by streaming audio www.radiott.com, wherever you may be, welcome to our live broadcast from the Offshore Bank Senior TT. We are just over a minute away from the start of the race, the senior TT on the Isle of Man, one of the most famous races in world motorsport, first contested in 1911, won by men who are legends in motorcycle history, men who became legends by winning the senior TT. Stanley Woods, Jimmy Guthrie, Jeff Duke, John Surtees, Mike Halewood, Giacomo Agostini, Phil Reed, Joey Dunlop, Carl Fogarty, Steve Hislop, Philip McCallum, and David Jeffries. The man who won this race last year, Adrian Archibald, is on the line, number one. The man who's achieved sporting greatness this week, John McGuinness, waits behind on bike number three. Behind for now, but for how long? We're into the final ten seconds before the start of the race. Starter, Richard Corkill, Chief Minister of the Isle of Man, is on the podium, and he waves the flag, and the senior TT is underway, and there goes Adrian Archibald on the Taz Suzuki, the winner last year, the holder of the title, and he's followed now by bike number two, that's Ian Locker on the 998 Honda CBR, and now John McGuinness, winner of the Formula One. And away he goes. 
backside just lifting slightly out of the seat I'm not sure if the engine sounded quite as clean as it has been doing but anyway he's on his way and there goes number four Jason Griffiths on the Yamaha R1 and now the sun really is glinting on the fairing of Bruce Anstey, the flying Kiwi number five. A glorious afternoon here in Douglas on the Isle of Man as Anstey sets off. One win under his belt already. How he would love to take this title back to New Zealand. And here is Ryan Farquhar. He's swapped his Kawasaki for a Suzuki for this race. A victor already today. His first TT win. What emotions must be going through his mind as he plunges down Bray Hill. And away goes number seven, Sean Harris from New Zealand on the Kawasaki. Kawasaki ZX-10. Next to go will be Richard Britton. Away goes Richard Britton on the OK in Suzuki from Ennis Kellen in Northern Ireland. Number nine is Chris Heath. And Chris is away from the start line, passing in front of us along the pits and away under the footbridge and past St Ninians. Next off is Mark Parrott and the all-black leathers Mark Parrott on the King's Court Yamaha R1 and he'll be followed by Nigel Davis Nigel Davis on the 1000cc Suzuki and away goes Nigel just controlling the front end he wants to rise up and say hello to the challenge that awaits it but away he goes under the footbridge and now it's rider number 12 the spectacular Martin Finnegan whose week has been getting better and better after a disappointing start six in the junior TT the other day Martin Finnegan no rider at 13, so we look to the start line again. And here is Gary Carswell from the Isle of Man, who was 15th in the junior. Away goes Gary, and again the front end just lifting up as he passes in front of us and passes alongside the scoreboard, and away he goes. And now here comes Big H, the fireman from Braddon. Missed out this morning in the Prodi 600, but uh, away he goes. He failed to finish the senior last time, running out of petrol. So with a bit of luck, he will be doing better this time. As number 16, John Barton, takes off as well, we'll take a short break. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. Great clothing, great choice, great value. Where? Behind the grandstand. There's a fabulous selection of quality TT merchandise for the whole family. Make this a TT to remember and buy your official gear from Motorsport Merchandise or visit ttmerchandise.com. Everyone knows that the all-new Yamaha R1 is this year's must-have bike. But with fantastic insurance deals through Yamaha Insurance Services on award-winning R6 and Phaser 600, there's never been a better time to visit your local Yamaha dealer. Log on to yamaha-motor.co.uk for more details. Well, Paul Duckett has missed his uh, starting slot, which was at 18, but we hear that he will be allowed to start at the back of the field with no time penalty. So number 18, Paul Duckett, won't be in his usual place on the road. Subject to confirmation, he will be allowed to start at the back of the field. We saw Gordon Blackley get away, Gordon riding the Honda CBR, which was raced by Keel Bryce at the British, Super, uh, British Superbike meeting at Cruxton last weekend. Much publicity surrounding that. It was flown in by RAF Hercules to Ronald's Way so that Gordon could ride it here today. So he is off safely on his way. And as I mentioned, Paul Duckett is going to have to wait. There is an oil warning out for Windy Corner on the board. An oil warning out for Windy Corner. That's number 26, Andrew Marsden, who gets underway. Having to, he retired at the pits in the junior, but he's off now. But the leaders will be approaching Motorcycle News, Glenn Hallam. Here's Morris. Thank you, Charlie. The uh, relevant times probably from last Saturday more than last year and the uh, delayed race. Archibald was here in 4.31. What will he be today? But he's through. Round the left-hand conditions considerably improved than those from earlier in the day with dry roads, but the second man's here now. Locker. He's through. McGuinness was 4.26 last Saturday. What will he be this time? Twitch there, but he's safely round this long left hander, and I suspect has already caught up time on the two in front of him on that first nine and a half mile run. And suddenly the road's quiet, those three away with it. They're in sequence. It was Archibald Locker McGuinness, but McGuinness looked up on time, but this is fairly quick. Jason Griffiths, but not pulled out quite as much as uh, perhaps McGuinness has. We'll shuffle them in when we can get them. But great conditions now for racing. There's Anstey. Wide alive from Anstey this time, but he's safely round that long left-hander. And, uh, well, great conditions for racing. 
uh, Saturday, what was it, 127.68, the first lap for McGuinness. And there is Brian Farquhar, winner of the earlier event, and I'm sure absolutely elated and pleased to be out in the senior, but the first win under his belt, he's safely through. Uh, will McGuinness set the pattern, the strategy, the tactic he's used previously this week in going for this fourth victory? Richard Britton, eighth last year for Richard, but that man, Sean Harris, has been overtaken by Britton on this first run. Maybe a bit of a panic there for Sean Harris's pit, but he's safely through. But he's been overtaken by Richard Britton on the road, so Britton obviously pulled out uh, a lot of time on Sean Harris. It is number three, McGuinness, who leads by four seconds here from Locker. Nine and ten, absolutely together, Chris Heath and Mark Parrott. Chris Heath, 19th last year, Mark Parrott, nine. But the uh, race leader, number three, John McGuinness, four seconds up on Ian Locker. Then jointly in third place, we've got Adrian Archibald and Bruce Anstey. They're two seconds down on Locker. 11 and 12. So Martin Finnegan right behind the Nigel Davis there. So he's pulled back virtually all of that starting interval, that 10 seconds. And I'm sure we'll be ahead of Nigel Davis in the not too distant future. But McGinn is flying through here. Four seconds is advantage already over Ian Locker, who wasn't exactly slow. I suspect that was Gary Carswell. Ahead of Paul Holt, definitely distinctive there. Big H out for his one race of the day. Uh, I think ninth place he achieved uh, Wednesday. So uh, Paul Hunt looking for a good performance. As he, I did, said the other day, I didn't realise he was 42. Uh, I would have given him about 28 as the age creeps up on us. So it's uh, number three, McGuinness. By that four seconds. Get another win to view 17, Gordon Blackley. 18 right behind him there, Paul Duckett. So the uh, local competitor, Paul Duckett, has pulled up a bunch of time there on Gordon Blackley. Let's just repeat that joint third place, Adrian Archibald and Bruce Anstey. They're two seconds down on Locker. And then in joint fifth place, we've got numbers four, Jason Griffiths. But Paul Hunt's up into that, so there's one to watch. Number 15, Paul Hunt, up into joint fifth place. We make him here, just behind that battle for third. Pick up some of these numbers, I Ian Hutchinson, 19, indeed it was. Somebody help me out with that one. Should have been Nigel Beatty, number 20. It was the blue fared machine, so that is likely. In seventh place, we've got Richard Britton. And in eighth place, number six, Ryan Farquhar. Fresh from his success. In ninth place, number 10, Mark Parrott. As another machine comes towards us on the yellow place, 21. Thomas Montano, we gave him a mention. As Andy said, uh, yes, he was in ninth, uh, ninth place this year, the highest placed uh, American contender, Thomas Montano. He's safely through here. One, two machines interview. Very quickly indeed, 23, 24. Jim Hodson and Ian Armstrong circulated together, but obviously Ian Armstrong uh, ahead in that particular battle on corrected time. Number three, McGuinness leads by four seconds from Locker. Locker two seconds up on that battle for third. 25 through now. Mirko Kaltsek. That battle for third concerns Adrian Archibald, number one, and number five, Bruce, Bruce Anstey. They're just one second ahead of in fifth place jointly. Number four, Jason Griffiths, and number 15, Paul Hunt. Two locals together there. 26, 27. Andrew Marsden and Chris Palmer. Chris is having such a wonderful week. So the news from Glen Helen, lap one. McGuinness, is he flying again? Is he going to blitz the rough record? He leads by four seconds from Locker. Then in joint third place, Adrian Archibald and Bruce Anstey, two seconds down on Locker. It's then four and 15 together, and then some numbers, 18, 8, 6, 10, 12, 14, and 17. With that, back to the MCN Grandstand. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. What better way to finish off a great day's racing than with a great meal? Everyone's welcome at the Paragon Restaurant of the Hilton Hotel and Casino. Choose from the two-course carvery at just $11.95 or tuck into a succulent steak with a selection of sauces at only $14.95. Tempted? Then make sure of your table by calling the Paragon now on 682755. Your TT trip isn't complete without a visit to Road & Track Motorcycles, the Ireland's sole Yamaha dealer. 
Check out the latest Yamaha models, including the exhilarating R1 and R6, the totally redesigned Phaser 600, and the Supermoto XT660X, only at Road and Track, Tinwald Street, Douglas. Riders continuing to depart here in front of us at the MCN Grandstand Commentary Point. And we can confirm that number 18, Paul Duckett, will start at the back and no time penalty. So a bit of a relief there, but Paul's obviously got an awful lot of traffic to fight his way through, which he wasn't expecting. An additional non-starter is number 49, Paul uh, Phil Harvey. Number 49, Phil Harvey, is an additional non-starter. Well, we saw and we also heard the Voxan set off number 51 we hear that Richard Britton number 8 is touring at Quarry Benz Richard Britton number 8 touring at Quarry Benz we're off to Ramsey Hairpin though to pick up the leaders with Andy we have a clear road at the moment but the crowd are no longer a clear road it's Adrian Archibald fires that big Suzuki into sight right up the middle of the road round the hairpin and away up the hill you can just hear that bike sounds beautiful slips the clutch ever so slightly Adrian to get the thing out the hairpin it's two riders together it's McGuinness is on the, in the lead on the road over Locker so McGuinness has taken Ian Locker on the road he leads him by two or three bike lengths as they disappear up towards the waterworks so he could well have extended the lead it looks very ominous for the opposition today John McGuinness is really on it a four second lead at Glen Helen what is it here we'll soon find out but I can tell you John McGuinness leads Ian Locker on the road as into sight comes Jason Griffiths very smooth very tidy for Jason no clutch slip there drives the big Yamaha up the hill and here comes Anstey yes it's Bruce Anstey Anstey looks very quick very quick has the bike heeled right over Bruce Hansi keeps the, the bike right on the inside almost touches his knee on the small wall on the inside of the Ramsey hairpin um, trying to use as little road as possible obviously to, to get the, the least distance travelled uh, in contrast to Ian Locker of course who takes a big wide fast line but they, they usually come in together and go out much the same so there doesn't seem to be a, a perfect line here it's, I think it's down to each rider's taste but you can see the difference in these bikes from, this, from the bikes this morning much more aggressive much quicker coming up the hill from the Stella and Maris section using much more of the road as well uh, the big bikes are probably what some 180 horsepower I do believe out of some of these big bikes so it's a lot to handle we have a clear road still at the moment and we also have a 9 second lead for McGuinness over Archibald and Ryan Farker comes into view and round the hairpin tight line for Ryan that bike sounds beautiful as well I can go back to the times and it's John McGuinness number 3 leading this race aboard his Yamaha by some 9 seconds from Adrian Archibald aboard the Taz Suzuki number one and three, four riders come into sight together it's eight, ten, seven and nine as quick as that not a bike length between them what a sight that will be going over the mountain eight, Richard Britton <coughs> sorry, excuse me eight, Richard Britton ahead of number ten it's Mark Parrott number seven, Sean Harris oh! Martin, you guess who it is, it's Martin Finnegan who else, there's a great big black line as Martin Finnegan came through but we also had Chris Heath through and now number 11 um, number 11 is Nigel Davies He's come, he came through Mart, Martin Finnegan though as, a, as always backs this thing in motocross style he comes Big H, very fast approach for Big H number 15, I see he's down in, and followed closely by Gary Carswell so he's taken Gary on the road and H has pulled out probably 20-30 uh, yards there on Gary Carswell as well um, I, I noticed in the programme that um, uh, Paul Hunt's down on a 1000 Suzuki well in the Formula 1 race he was in a, on a 750 Suzuki so if we can get that confirmed it would be interested to know which he's riding because of course he did come home as the first 750 in the Formula 1 race so going back to the timing now we, we can confirm which we did before John McGuinness holds a 9 second advantage over Adrian Archibald as interview comes number 17 uh, Gordon Blackley and I can confirm that this time uh, Big H, Paul Hunt is on a 1,000 Suzuki. Uh, John McGuinness holds a 9-second lead from Adrian Archibald, who, who holds a 2-second lead from Ian Locker. Uh, as interview comes number 16, which is John Barton. Ian Locker, in turn, holds a 1-second lead over um, Adrian... Uh, sorry, over Bruce Anstey and Jason Griffiths, who cannot be separated. The Yamaha and Suzuki men cannot be separated. So joint fourth... Uh, um, 
Bruce Anstey and um, Griffiths in fill, well that makes sixth place now five seconds down Paul Hunt and seventh Martin Finnegan some 12 seconds down on, on Paul Hunt number 19 going through there that's Ian Hutchinson on the Suzuki followed fairly closely by number 20 Nigel Beatty the local man from Laxey aboard his 1000 it says here rocket Yamaha and it certainly rockets up the hill at an amazing rate of knots uh, in seventh place we had Martin Finnegan just 12 seconds down on Paul Hunt and in eighth place it's Gary Carswell just one second down on Finnegan with ninth um, Mark Parrott one second down on Gary Carswell tenth is number 17 Gordon Blackley number 21 and 24 coming to side in close company flying around the hairpin 21 is Thomas Mont Montano the American 24 uh, is Ian Armstrong Ian Armstrong's already had a couple of good rides this week number 23 Jim Hodgson so you'd expect Ian Armstrong to be overtaking somewhere over the mountain section where Thomas Montano uh, so we'll just update before we hand you back I can say on uh, the first lap here it's John McGuinness Yamaha holding a 9 second lead over Adrian Archibald Suzuki who has a 2 second lead over Ian Locker who in turn holds a 1 second lead over Jason Griffiths and Bruce Anstey then comes 15 some 5 seconds down 12 14 10 and 17 and with that it's back to the MCN Grandstand At Standard Bank we're committed to the island's community we're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT if you want a global bank that thinks local standard bank has the answer there's more to racing than speed it's about control the faster you go the more control you need when you get your bike out leave racing to the pros slow down on corners a taste for speed could leave you tasting the tarmac remember slow down roads bite back that work then stick to the right as you hit glen Tramon. On through Mountain Town, mind the curb. Top gear across Glen Alden. Flat out to Schoolhouse. One track mind, you can't lose with Bennett's. Bennett's, nothing but bike insurance. Visit bennett's.co.uk. Well, welcome back from Charlie Lambert at MCN Grandstand. The lights are on now for three, two, and one. Uh, quickly, just to give you the news that Ryan Farquhar is not on the Suzuki. Uh, the pit crew have told us he is, in fact, on the Kawasaki on the ZX-10. So Ryan Farquhar is riding the Kawasaki today, uh, having already taken victory with Kawasaki this morning in the Prodi 600. So John McGuinness was the leader on the road at Ramsey, and we'll see if he's still the leader on the road when he passes us here at the grandstand effectively he doubled his lead uh, on the dash between Glen Helen and the Ramsey hairpin and here comes the first man and in fact it's Adrian Archibald who's first across so it's Adrian Archibald who is first across here and McGuinness is not ahead on the road he is in second place he's got ahead of Locker here he comes now and there's Locker right behind him and there's a scream in front of us here at the grandstand and disappear from view away to our left so McGuinness is heading up Ian Locker and 170 miles an hour is the speed on the digital readout on the far side. And Norman Quayle reckons that John McGuinness now has an 11-second advantage over Ian Locker. An 11-second advantage. There goes Jason Griffiths. 165.9 miles an hour the speed there so the, the uh, two Yamahas are through. So just to look at the top three. There goes Anstey. Anstey is through now. Bruce Anstey on the Taz Suzuki, one TT win this week and gunning for another one in Suzuki colours this afternoon. So John McGuinness with an 11 second lead over number two, Ian Locker, here at the grandstand at the end of lap one. And Locker with a 0.8, so that's virtually a one second advantage over Adrian Archibald, who's in third place. Archibald with a five second lead over in fourth place, Jason Griffiths. And Griffiths with a one second lead over number five, Bruce Anstey. But of course, Paul Hunt has been going like a fire engine out there, hasn't he? Blue lights flashing, the full business bells ringing, and we wait to see how he's getting on when he comes through. Uh, Big H having started off at number 15 on the road. We'll take a short break. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. 
Are you scared of the rain, or are you a real biker who rides in any weather? If you are, you'll need Tough Map, the map that lasts. It's 100% waterproof and available in UK, Europe and London Street Atlas. Buy them on the Seacat, Paul Dedman Motorcycles in Ramsey, or at toughmap.com. Tough Map, the map that lasts. Great clothing, great choice, great value. Where? Behind the grandstand. There's a fabulous selection of quality TT merchandise for the whole family. Make this a TT to remember and buy your official gear from Motorsport Merchandise or visit ttmerchandise.com. Sean Harris has just rocketed past us on the Kawasaki as they continue to finish lap one. And there goes Paul Hunt, number 15, on the 1,000cc Kringle Suzuki. Paul Hunt, head down, means business, and followed across the line in front of us by 11 and 14. Nigel Davis and Gary, Gary Carswell. Gary Carswell having a decent ride as well in the senior TT here this afternoon around the mountain circuit. So just updating the situation then, I think we got as far as fifth place, which is Bruce Bruce Anstey, and he retains fifth place. He's 12 seconds ahead of Paul Hunt, who is sixth. Uh, Paul Hunt is 18 seconds ahead of the man in seventh place. That's number 10, Mark Parrott. And Mark Parrott is 0.3 seconds ahead of number 14, Gary Carswell. So not much to split those two, as in front of us goes number 17. That's Gordon Blackley on the Honda. So to complete the top 10, in 10th place at the moment is number 17, Gordon Blackley. Gordon Blackley, 8 seconds behind Martin Finnegan. So that's the top 10 then, top of the leaderboard at the end of lap 1. This is a 4-lap race, the senior TT, 4 laps of the mountain course, uh, and that's a distance of just under 151 miles. The lap speed for the leader, John McGuinness, 127.19 miles an hour. That's just outside David Jeffrey's record. And the lap time, 17 minutes, 47.9 seconds. We'll cross now to Motorcycle News, Glenn Helen and Morris Maudsley. Well, Charlie, that's uh, just outside, as you say, in these conditions, which are obviously considerably better than those that were here at the first race. But here's the first man on the road. That's Archibald, as expected. Then McGuinness, then Locker. That reflects roughly the distances between them on the road. Fairly similar, and I would say that uh, McGuinness has now got Adrian Archibald in his sights in terms of leading on the road. The tactic is the same. He's blasted that first lap. Will he continue? Uh, what, 17.47, I think, or thereabouts for that opening lap from a standing start, and still only 0 0.1 of a second, I think, outside or is it 10 hundredths, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 somethings, 127.19 as opposed to 127.29 uh, for DJ's lap record from 2002. 13 seconds is lead now, there's Anstey. 13 seconds, the advantage of further two seconds over number two Locker. Locker in turn two seconds up on Archibald as those differences start to materialise. But, uh, well, John McGuinness going for that fourth of the week and a fantastic performance he's put up all week long. He's had already three firsts, a second and a third, looking to add to that, looking to equal Phil McCann's record of four in a week, and he's got a 13-second advantage to do so. Uh, in second place, number two, Locker. In third place, number one, Archibald. We should by now, I would have thought, have had Griffiths, but we haven't seen him. So we're looking... We're told he might well have retired at Appledean, so don't panic in terms of uh, Griffiths. Obviously a disappointment, but we're told it could well be a retirement at Appledean. Not yet confirmed. That, will must, that is now confirmed. That's Jason Griffiths, rider, perfectly OK, a retirement at Appledean. It's been, well, an interesting week for Jason. He's hit the podium a couple of times uh, and also had some problems, but uh, a retirement for local man Jason Griffiths at Appledean. That will leave uh, Bruce Anstey clear in that uh, fourth place. Eight seconds down on Archibald. Well, there's that uh, familiar colours of the Makadu Kawasaki in the hands of Ryan Farquhar, this morning's winner. Uh, obviously not quite on the pace at the moment because that is with McGuinness. 13 seconds is advantage over Locker. Locker in turn, two seconds up on number one, Archibald. 
Uh, Adrian Archibald not had a good week at all uh, hoping I should imagine for at least a podium today 10 and 9 together as they were on the last lap Mark Parrott and Chris Heath this four lap senior in fact uh, reduced from six laps but then it was last year due to weather 12 Martin Vinegar different approach from Big H but he's through 15, 7 and 8 Sean Harris, Richard Britton, who obviously had some problems on that, uh, that first lap and has dropped down a bit, but seems to be going OK at the moment. Another machine to view, and I'm going to pick that up. Could be Gary Carson, I think, number 14, indeed it was. He's ahead of Nigel Davis. Uh, Nigel uh, ran quite well this week, but uh, without actually setting the place alight. So let's uh, just review that. Number three, McGuinness, in this four-lap senior, leads by 13 seconds. As I was saying, uh, last year the race was reduced through weather. It was also a four-lap race, and I believe there have been two other four-lap uh, senior races in the history of this event. Uh, this year reduced as a matter of strategy. Last year reduced due to weather conditions, and it was late into the afternoon before we actually got that underway last year. But this year they've gone on time. There's Gordon Blackley, number 17. So the departure of Jason Griffiths also means that uh, Paul Hunt moves up a slot into fifth place, 14 seconds down on Bruce Anstey. So number 15, Paul Hunt, is in fifth place now, following the departure of Jason Griffiths. But it's number three, McGuinness, who leads by 13 seconds from Locker. Locker in turn, a two-second advantage over Adrian Archibald. Adrian Archibald then in that third place, eight seconds up on the fourth place man. 16, John Barton through another of the locals and he's been getting the uh, signals out there at Crosby uh, encouraging him to go Barty go because of course it's from there that uh, John Barton comes keen on the football out there too that was Ian Hutchinson so the new superman Helen lap two with pit stops at the end of this an increased advantage for McGuinness 13 seconds he leads Locker uh, Locker two seconds ahead of Radian Archibald then 5, 15, 12, 14, 10, 17 with that back to the MCN grandstand at Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. Which venue has the greatest live music lineup this TT, plus the most exotic shows? The answer's simple, the venue. And with free entry before 10, you know you simply need to get in for the best party night around. The venue, Central Prom Douglas, where great music and good times are all part of the TT experience. Your TT trip isn't complete without a visit to Road and Track Motorcycles, the island's sole Yamaha dealer. Check out the latest Yamaha models, including the exhilarating R1 and R6, the totally redesigned Phaser 600, and the Supermoto XT660X, only at Road and Track, Tinwald Street, Douglas. Selon les chronos vérifiés de Glen Helen, en tête, le numéro 3, John McGuinness, 13 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 2, Ian Locker. Lui, 2 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 1, Adrian Archibald. Heike. Ja, danke, Mavis. Uh, was für ein Rennen hält John McGuinness hier etwa noch Sensationen für uns in der Hinterhand? Er liegt nur 0,9 Sekunden unter dem Rekord von David Jeffries. 0,9 Sekunden. Er liegt in Führung in Glen Helen mit 13 Sekunden Vorsprung vor Ian Locker, Der wiederum mit zwei Sekunden Vorsprung vor Archibald. Zurück an Charlie. Well, it looks like John McGuinness is doing it again, doesn't it? Uh, if he carries on like this, it'll be his fourth TT win in the space of the week. And that will tie Philip McCallan with the all-time record four TTs in one festival. Walter Cordoba is off at Braddon, but he's OK. Now to motorcycle news, Ramsey Hairpin and Andy. Yes, we await uh, the first rider through who we expect to be Adrian Archibald, although I'm sure John McGuinness will be right on his tail. They can't be far away because I think we just heard the TV helicopter overhead. So as the um, spectators crane, crane their heads and we hear the sound. Yes, it's Adrian Archibald with John McGuinness on his tail. Adrian Archibald, beautiful and smooth. And John McGuinness, what, probably a second at the maximum behind him. So like 25 yards, and he's Ian Locker. Very fast, wide approach. Very fast. And in fact, uh, Ian's taken a new line through the hairpin here. I can tell he's taken a tighter line. 
Uh, no damp patch in the middle of the road today. Perhaps that's the reason he said he uh, takes a wide line to avoid the damp patch. Today there isn't a damp patch, so maybe he's changed his line accordingly. But McGuinness certainly got, had Adrian Archibald right in his sights. And given that uh, Ian, he's already passed Ian Locker, John McGuinness must know this race is, is his for the taking. Obviously there's a lot can happen between now and the finish line, but certainly McGuinness has this race well under control. Uh, and it's a fantastic sight to see. That, that'll be great going over the mountain. Uh, spectators at the Craig looking up as when those bikes fly around the corner at crates and into sight. That'll be some sight indeed. As it is here at the hairpin. No uh, desperate antics that time from any of the first three. Here comes Bruce Anstey into sight. Bruce always fast, always smooth. Most of these guys have a line to stick to lap after lap after lap. And... Uh, it's it's like clockwork with him, absolutely superb. And I can tell you now that John McGuinness has extended his lead. And number three, Yamaha holds an 18-second advantage over Adrian Archibald, number one on the Taz Suzuki, who in turn holds just one second advantage over Ian Locker, who's in third place aboard the Honda. And Ian Locker in turn holds a 19-second advantage over Bruce Anstey on the second Taz Suzuki. So that's your th- first four timings here at Ramsey Hairpin on the second lap. Of course, at the end of this lap, we've got pit stops coming into play, and all sorts of things can go wrong on pit stops. The guys have to make sure, the pit crews have to make sure they get the full amount of fuel in, because these bikes are all very marginal on fuel capacity certainly in the production race we we saw that one or two fell foul of the fact that uh, the bikes couldn't do two laps fully on a tank of fuel obviously they've got extended tanks for the senior but even so fuel is a major concern and if you just take that filler out one second early that could be the difference between making it the finish line and not and if you leave it in too long you could drop your rider a place by leaving it too too long in the pits also going to come into play as tyre changes Eddie Roberts the Pirelli uh, guru says they don't actually need to change the tyres but they've got enough time so they change them just for safety and for half fresh rubber as Ryan Farquhar comes into view a bit of a slow approach from Ryan certainly nowhere near as aggressive as on his 600 production bike down here as two riders come into view very Oh, nice twitch there from Chris Heath. Closely followed, Chris Heath, number nine, closely followed by Mark Parrott, number ten. Uh, the Honda chased by the Yamaha. Chris Heath had it all twitching on the approach, and obviously he can hear Mark Parrott in his exhaust pipes. Ah, and Martin Finning, oh, he's got it sideways. The front's going, the back's going. He had everything going there. I think he had it under control. Maybe he didn't that time, but he's Big H. Big H has caught a lot of time up on Martin Finnegan. Paul Hunt disappears up the hill. Maybe it was a mistake in the Formula 1 race to run the 750 instead of the 1,000. Uh, who knows? But uh, he, w- he did win the prize for the first 750 home. And Richard Britton comes into sight. Richard Britton, number 8, of course, he's lost a lot of time. Um, some sort of problem. I can't remember if I heard he had a problem earlier on. Gary Carswell going around, number 14. Again, a nice, smooth ride by Gary Carswell. Very neat, tidy, nice looking machine. As in comes come Sean Harris, number seven. Another down on time. I don't think these big Kawasaki's are the, quite the thing here yet. Nigel Davies, number 11, going through. The big ZX10, obviously doing the business in British Superbike in Scott, Scar- Scott Smart and um, Glenn Richards' hands. But maybe needs a little bit more sorting out for the TT circuit because it's so bumpy, so variable. Um, obviously, you need to get these bikes set up absolutely perfectly because if there's just the slightest thing on the handling it's something you're just not happy with it, it not only does it prevent you from going full speed but it affects your concentration number 17 there gordon blackley he's well up on the, aboard the honda it affects your concentration as i was saying there if you have a handling problem and that can make an ocean of difference you've actually got to focus 100 percent total on this circuit to make the best of it going back to the leaderboard then we have john mcginnis on the yamaha number three 18 seconds in front of adrian archibald taz suzuki uh, number one in second place in third place number two ian locker just one seconds down on adrian archibald ian locker of course on the honda in fourth place bruce anstey number five some 19 seconds down on on locker anstey on the taz suzuki in fifth place local man fireman Paul Hunt number 15 on his big Suzuki he's just 14 seconds down on Anstey he's number 16 John Barton goes through in 6th place Martin Finnegan the ex motocrosser number 12 and he's 4 seconds down on Paul Hunt number 19 comes into view in Hutchinson uh, where do we get to Mark Parrott we had through uh, sorry 7th place Mark Parrott 4 seconds down on Finnegan 
number eight, Gary Car sorry, if number fourteen in eighth place, Gary Carswell two seconds down on Parrot, and Chris Heath, number nine, eight seconds down on Carswell in ninth. And I, with that it's back to the motorcycle news grandstand. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. Motorcycle News, the world's biggest motorcycling publication, has just got bigger. With helpful hints and tips on how to buy and sell bikes, up-to-date news, reviews and sport, including all the action from the 2004 Isle of Man TT. Motorcycle News, on sale every Wednesday. Great clothing, great choice, great value. Where? Behind the grandstand. There's a fabulous selection of quality TT merchandise for the whole family. Make this a TT to remember and buy your official gear from Motorsport Merchandise or visit ttmerchandise.com. The lights are on for Archibald McGuinness and Locker at Cronk Nimona. There are only two people sitting pretty around the TT circuit this afternoon. One is John McGuinness, the other is Maurice Maudsley, because the roast beef sarnies have arrived at Glen Helen. And we wait for the pit stops. Uh, we've just got a back marker coming into pit lane at the moment, so he's going to have to get out of the way pretty sharpish because the front men are going to be coming in and uh, one of the marshals up there just skips onto the track to pick up uh, something, a bit of debris or something that uh, might have been left there and the klaxons are going just to warn the approach of the leading riders and coming into the stop box is John McGuinness. John McGuinness is now first on the road into the stop box. Close behind him is Adrian Archibald. Out comes McGuinness, Archibald as well on the Taz Suzuki. We go down to Chris Kinley. Yes, thank you very much for that, John. Getting a new back tyre into the bike, of course. Uh, an 18-second lead at Ramsey. He's been relayed that information by Jim Moody now. So in the time it's taken me to tell you that, he's got the rear spindle out and he's also got the chain back on and now he's just about to put the rear spindle back in as quick as that. Let's have a little wander down to Ian Locker. He's also getting a new tyre in as well, as is Adrian Archibald. So all the three men in so far, McGuinness, Locker and Archibald, all getting tyres as well. John just sitting nice and calm on the bike, 18 second lead but it is close between Archibald and Locker, Adrian, oh it struggles to fire and there it goes away, Archibald's away, bit of fuel, now then a little bit of fuel all over the front of uh, John's bike there as well so that might go down to where he doesn't want it to go down so it is of course McGuinness out also Archibald out and will Ian's bike pull come on Ian's bike it's not firing, Lock and CBR just fires now, so maybe a little bit of time lost there. Uh, we'll get that confirmed in a moment by Tim O'Hanlon. So we're just waiting for the next rider to come through, who should be Bruce Anstey. It is Bruce comes in on his task, Suzuki. He's about a third of the way down here and stops the bike uh, nice and steady in his pits, making sure nobody else comes into the stop box before I go across and get the information. And Bruce having a drink, you hear the ratchet going there again, so the rear spindle out, the chain comes out, about two or three people working around Bruce's bike, so that's the rear wheel out already, brand new tyre in, into the back already, gets it in onto the brake, onto the brake caliper, gets the chain on as quick as little, as quick as that he's done that, and there's the rear spindle in, and you'll hear the ratchet going any second now, so there you go, that's as quick as that, they've got the rear wheel out changed, and they've nearly finished the refueling as well, we'll go over to Tim in just a second, and get you some time soon as uh, Bruce Anstey goes, so pretty slick pit stop there, Ian Locker having a couple of problems though, and it wouldn't fire up straight away, and there goes Bruce away now into the background, Tim are we okay for time for the moment? Yes, McGuinness has got a 16-second lead over Archibald now because Locker had that slow pit stop and Locker is a further 7 seconds behind Archibald and 5 Anstey is 26 seconds. That was a slow pit stop again for Anstey. OK, so another slow pit stop for Anstey, so we should be waiting next, I think maybe for... I think Ryan won't be far away now, actually, Ryan Farquhar. So McGuinness, 16-second lead after the pit stop. We'll be here in the Hooter going any second now. Back to you, Charlie, for some lap times. Well, uh, McGuinness lost five seconds there, uh, Chris, I can tell you, in the pit stop. He was 21 seconds ahead of Archibald when he came in, and uh, as Tim just said, 16 ahead when he went out. Uh, of course, we're going to be waiting for Paul Hunt to come in. We have a message for Ken Sprayson to go to the paddock. Would Ken Sprayson please go to the paddock? Waiting for Hunt. We've got the lap times from the end of lap 
two. John McGuinness, 17 minutes, 50.7 seconds. 17 minutes, 50.7 seconds. 126.85 miles an hour. Back down to Chris. It's Big H into the stop box alongside Martin Finnegan. Ryan's just come in. Ryan Farquhar's just come in and shook his head. Martin goes round the outside of Big H. And uh, Ryan just gives a shake of the head. I think he might be getting off it, actually. He is. Mark uh, Parrott is also in. And also Chris Heath at the moment. Big H getting the information from the Kringle boys and getting the fuel in there and Ryan's bike is getting fueled up but I don't know he's looking at his hand so maybe his hand has just given him a bit too much stick no okay one of one is the mechanics and there you go and listen to that that's Mark Parrott's fire blade firing up there Gary Carswell into the stop box alongside Richard Britton Richard gets the okay to go Richard not having the best of races but can Big H keep it going here currently lying fifth at the moment can Big H keep it going for local hopes and uh, oh somebody stopped down the bottom there who is it he's not running at all Mark Parrott Mark Parrott can't get his machine going the R1 struggling to fire Big H just about to go let's get you the audio of that as Nigel Davis comes in that's Big H firing away. He's caught Parrot up on the road now, and there's Nigel Davis into his stop box. Can we adjust ball hunting at all, Tim? Yes, he's uh, 15 seconds behind Anstey in fifth place. So Big H, 15 seconds behind Anstey in fifth place, and Ryan Farquhar is a retirement. Charlie? Well, dramatic stuff, and that really was a desperate delay as well for Mark Parrot. He was in seventh place. Uh, when they passed Andy at MCN Ramsey Hairpin but he will certainly have lost a serious amount of time there just couldn't get the bike going uh, one of the pit crew members from another team came out to give him a shove and then his own pit crew came scampering down pit lane after him and just as they got there the bike eventually did fire and away went Mark Parrott so we're now on lap 3 of this 4 lap race Seamus Green number 48 is a retirement I mentioned earlier on that Walter Cordoba was off at Braddon he has been taken to hospital but he's ok been taken to hospital for a checkup, and Jason Griffiths retired earlier on at Appledean at the start of lap two. Uh, Chris is sending word up from down below. There's a possible retirement from Sean Harris. We'll confirm that for you. But now we're going to MC and Glen Helen and Morris. Thank you, Charlie. Perfect timing. Here is the first man on the road, number one, Adrian Archibald. He's safely through here, lap three. But well, the man who's flying is McGuinness. This is not him because, of course, they're now uh, getting mixed up amongst the, the later runners. We've already had numbers 86 and 89 through Scott Stewart, certainly, and uh, David Paradis. But here's a quicker approach. That's Locker, number two. And now another one, the race leader, number three, McGuinness. Doesn't look quite as quick as he has been, and he looks over his shoulder as he went away from us. Was that misfiring? No, nah, it surely couldn't be. He looked over his shoulder, didn't seem quite as quick here as he has been on previous laps, but he's safely through, but the order's Archibald, Locker, McGuinness. I thought McGuinness got ahead of Locker out of the pits, and if that is the case, then McGuinness has got some problems, and he has, on the last race of the day, he's dropped time. We have a new race leader, it's Archibald. There's obviously a problem for McGuinness, and once again, we can say drama indeed. It's a seven-second advantage for Adrian Archibald, over number three, John McGuinness. Lockett is still in third place, but only three seconds now separates him from John McGuinness. There's Amstel. Well, I thought uh, he got out ahead of Locker. Quite surprising to see Ian Locker here before him on the road. Well, he's been reported touring at Sarah's. That was just after he'd looked behind. Uh, it sounded as he went away from us as though there was a problem. So it's not going to be four. It's definitely not going to be four. It's now Adrian Archibald who leads last year's winner, bidding to make it uh, a double, having won this race last year in those extraordinary circumstances. Well, fate has dealt a hand. Adrian Archibald leads by seven seconds from McGuinness, but reported as touring. That'll move Locker up into second place. Uh, he's now in third place as they left us three seconds down on McGuinness, but 23 seconds ahead of Bruce Anstey. We await the arrival of number 15, Paul Hunt, but new race leader at Glen Helen. McGuinness obviously hit problems before they arrived with us, reported now as touring at Sarah's. He probably toured up the way to uh, the Cronker Body Strait, and his race appears to be run. Nonetheless, he's had an excellent week, but not going to emulate, and Phil McCallan still remains, or will still remain, the only one to have won four races in a week. Well... Get our breath back. Adrian Archibald, new race leader by seven seconds. Now, that margin over Ian Locker 
is about 10 seconds. So that's the difference we're going to have to be looking for at Ramsey. This will, of course, have the effect of moving, moving Paul Hunt up a slot as well. Uh, fantastic race, nonetheless. Uh, pity for John McGuinness, having uh, blitzed the, uh, the lap on 27.19 on his opening lap. 126.85, including his slowing down. But I, Chris Heath, of course, all these uh, later runners will now get uh, moved up a slot and looking for better positions. And we can uh, slot some of those in eventually, but we await the arrival of uh, number 15, Paul Hunt. Yes, Charlie, the beef sandwiches have been consumed. We'll have to wait till the next lap for the jam and cream donuts that have also been provided as Big H comes through. So we can get his time slotted in in a moment. And thanks to this. Just down to Chris for the moment. Yeah, Jim Hodson has just pushed in and Jim looks actually all in. Philip Stewart has also pushed in as well, out of petrol. But let's go find out exactly if we can, just find out exactly how far Jim has pushed in from. And let's go and ask him. Let's get the info from Jim. Let him get a drink in. My word. Oh, he looks absolutely all in here. He looks absolutely stuffed. 38 into the stop box. Jim, where did he push in from, Jim? He started from Craig Nabar. Had to start padding and wobbling from Craig. <laughs> absolutely knackered, mate. OK, you had a long push in there. OK, Morris? Thanks, yes, as we... Uh, I think that was Brit Richard Britton going through there, but certainly we've had through 12 Martin Finnegan, 14 Gary Carswell, a number of retirements, which means that this leaderboard's going to get shuffled virtually continuously, and uh, we're still only into, uh, well, just the start, effectively, of lap three, another lap and three quarters to go, but yes, we can put number 15... Uh, Paul Hunt, remember, into fifth position here, but remember that doesn't include the departure of McGuinness 11, Nigel Davis. But for the sake of correctness, as they left here, number 15, Paul Hunt, is actually 25 seconds behind number 5, Bruce Anstey. So the news here is that we have a new race leader, Adrian Archibald. As they left here, he was seven seconds up on McGuinness, who will be a retirement, and then in third place, Locker, followed by number five, Anstey, number 15, then Hunt, then 14, 9 and 12. With that, back to the Motorcycle News Grandstand. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. Une virée en moto, ne faites pas monter les enjeux. Ne prenez pas de risques en doublant ou en allant du mauvais côté de la chaussée. Vous feriez aussi bien de jouer à la roulette russe. C'est votre vie que vous mettez en jeu, ou même celle d'un autre. Ralentissez, ou la route se vengera. Great clothing, great choice, great value. Where Behind the grandstand. There's a fabulous selection of quality TT merchandise for the whole family. Make this a TT to remember and buy your official gear from Motorsport Merchandise or visit ttmerchandise.com. Encore une fois de Glenn Helen en tête le numéro 1, Adrian Archibald, 7 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 3, John McGuinness, qui maintenant roule lentement avant l'abondance certain. Il avait 3 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 2, Ian Locker, Heike. Ja, also neueste Meldung hier. Uh, Glenn Helen, ein neuer, uh, eine neue Führung Nummer 1. Archibald hat einen siebensekündigen Vorsprung auf John McGuinness Nummer 3. Der wiederum war mit drei Sekunden Vorsprung auf Nummer 2 angekommen, Ian Locker. Aber letzte Neuigkeiten. John McGuinness wurde bei Sarah's Cottage uh, als in Schwierigkeiten und als Touring gemeldet. Warten wir ab. Charlie. Hi, Kurt. Thank you very much indeed. So, Adrian Archibald then in the lead, and he should have something like a 10-second lead over Ian Locker. John McGuinness has retired. John McGuinness has retired at Kurt Michael, and it is a clutch problem. We're now going to Motorcycle News, Ramsey Hairpin and Andy. Yeah, we await Adrian Archibald coming into sight. Just on cue, look at that. Beautiful approach, really fast, really wide. <coughs> and he t Ooh, wide on the exit is Adrian doesn't set the clutch this time smooth the bike sounds lovely and he's away up the hill to the waterworks you can just see as they bank to the right as they go out of our vision there's uh, two right handers on the approach to the left right or left double right of waterworks you can just see these big bikes the power and the, and the back wheel hanging on for grim death trying to keep grip as they go up the hill as number 89 one of the the uh, land riders comes into view we've had some great action here oh we have a tour it's not it is <laughs> It is, yeah. Ian Locker has come to a halt in front of us. Or not quite in front of us. 
So drama indeed. Many failures today. The two factory Yamahas of Griffiths and McGuinness already out. And Ian Locker, he came into sight and slowed. I couldn't... Oh, he's banging the tank. What's wrong with it? We, we obviously don't know. I guess we'll get Ian up here eventually. But I can tell you, Ian Locker is out of this race. He's pushing the bike to the side and parking the big Honda. Not a happy uh, bunny at all. Banging the tank. Really angry. What's gone wrong? Who knows? Um, well, drama indeed. Um, so that leaves Adrian Archibald clear ahead. In fact, it's a Taz Suzuki 1-2 now because Bruce Anstey will slot into second place aboard the other Taz Suzuki. In fact, here he comes. Bruce Anstey's just passed one of the slow riders. Straight inside, round the hairpin. Nice and smooth. Bruce looks very... Um, I wouldn't say casual because you can't lap the Alman TT course at 125 mile an hour plus and be casual. But he looks like he's just taking it steady. Uh, taking no chances, he's doing well, he's in second place, uh, who knows, a, another problem could befall Adrian Archibald yet, um, the look of the Irish hasn't been too good uh, so far this week, although um, Ryan Farquhar obviously broke the spell uh, just now, we're going to try and find out off Ian what uh, exactly the problem was, in fact if we can, we may be even get in, in the box with us as we wait for some more riders to come through, but we have had excitement all the way through, and I can tell you that Adrian Archibald now holds a 38 second advantage so number one on the Taz Suzuki, Adrian Archibald holds a 38 second advantage over Bruce Anstey, number five, also aboard a Taz Suzuki. So it's starting at the order. Uh, in fact, that will bring uh, Paul Hunt up into third. Well, what, what a thing that would be if Paul Hunt could get a roster and finish. He'd be over the moon. And of course, w would every other Manxman because that would be a, a Manx podium, which would be great. Uh, we, we've got some time to wait before Paul comes into sight. There are several other riders will probably be ahead of him on the road. But it's certainly opened the thing out. And it's unbelievable to think uh, that both factory Yamahas have gone out. The Honda of Locke have gone out. Ryan Farquhar appears to have retired in the pits. It's uh, uh, an amazing rate of attrition because so far this TT week we've had very, very few retirements. Certainly of the, the top runners, very few indeed. But as I, I was saying, the action down the field has been tremendous. We had uh, Andy Wallace came diving up the inside of John Donham. Uh, the Suzuki inside the Yamaha nearly T-boned him off at the hairpin they both went round together John Donnan got back in front then turned around and waved him through as in comes number 9 Chris Heath Chris Heath's having all snaking on the brakes coming in so maybe he's got a pit board to say some of these boys are out and fancies a sniff of a rostrum himself so Chris Heath certainly got the hammer down and trying very hard aboard his 1000cc Honda uh, Chris probably going to be the first Honda home two more come into view and it's Big H Paul Hunt number 15 ahead of number 10 on the road Mark Parrott it's very smooth Paul looks round just to check where Mark Parrott is he knows he's there he can hear the sound in fact it looked as though Parrott tried to go under him oh Martin Finnegan broadsides <laughs> absolutely fantastic I don't know what Ian Locker made of that but that was brilliant he just slid completely in right to the apex just about before he straightened it up I know he's doing it on purpose he's a terrible lad what's he doing to my heart rate I don't know on the big round tower Yamaha and Gary Carswell comes around the hairpin very fast for Gary he had everything on the deck there his knee the foot rest the lot he was really going for it so Gary Carswell flying there I'm sure these boys have been getting pit signals and they may have seen one or two bikes parked up around the circle and obviously think to themselves yeah I'm in with a really good chance today I could get on the rostrum because it's, it's pretty close down the field we'll just tell you that um Paul Hunt now trailed as um, Richard Britton comes into view, number 8 Richard obviously got some problems to be so far down the field that um, Paul Hunt now holding third place of course, number 15 is just 30 seconds behind Bruce Anstey so but it's not impossible it's not impossible for Paul to move up even further, in fourth place we have Gary Carswell, number 14 and he's 40 seconds behind Paul Hunt in fifth place it is Chris Heath number nine just one second behind Gary Carswell as number 11 Cap Davies rounds the hairpin and he's closely followed by Gordon Blackley number 17 so Gordon may well be in the frame because uh, by the time we deduct the, the starting time but I'll just before we hand back I will just review Adrian Archibald Taz Suzuki holds a 30 second advantage over Bruce Anstey on a Taz Suzuki 30 seconds ahead of Paul Hunt in third uh, who is 40 seconds ahead of Gary Carswell in fourth uh, Chris Heath one second down in fifth Martin Finnegan six one second down and with that back to the MCN Grandstand At Standard Bank we're committed to the island's community we're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT if you want a global bank that thinks local Standard Bank has the answer 
Everyone knows that the all-new Yamaha R1 is this year's must-have bike. But with fantastic insurance deals through Yamaha Insurance Services on award-winning R6 and Phaser 600, there's never been a better time to visit your local Yamaha dealer. Log on to yamaha-motor.co.uk for more details. Your TT trip isn't complete without a visit to Road and Track Motorcycles, the Ireland's sole Yamaha dealer. Check out the latest Yamaha models, including the exhilarating R1 and R6, the totally redesigned Phaser 600, and the Supermoto XT660X, only at Road and Track, Tinwald Street, Douglas. Welcome back to the grandstand. Uh, Seamus Green, number 48, stopped at Kate's cottage with hand and arm injuries. He's on his way to hospital, but otherwise okay. Sean Harris retired at the pits at the end of, uh, I think it was the end of uh, lap two, yeah, after the pit stop. But the light is on now for Adrian Archibald at Cronley Muller, the man who stormed into the lead 38 seconds ahead. And here he comes. And there goes Adrian Archibald, 162.7 miles an hour on the digital readout as he rockets away and begins the descent now of Bray Hill, heading down to Quarterbridge, and then the slow right-hander that'll take him on the charge through to Braddon and away for the final lap of the Senior TT 2004. Adrian Archibald, 38 seconds ahead of Bruce Anstey, his teammate in the Taz Suzuki Colours when they left Andy at uh, MCN Ramsey Hairpin. So we'll see if he's managed to extend that lead any further, but a bit further down, it's a Manx hat trick with Paul Hunt in third place, Gary Carswell fourth, and Chris Heath in fifth place. So the three legs of man that's certainly doing the business out there this afternoon. Looking at some of the details from further back, just while we wait for the next riders to come through with the light on for Bruce Anstey at Cronkney Mona. Number 29, that's Guy Martins, had a good ride. He was up to 10th at the end of lap two. And Andy Wallace, number 36, is so far the best of the 750s. He was up to 13th place overall, the best of the 750s. Separate prizes for the first of the 750s, also the first of the 250s to get in. And the first on a junior 600 machine as here comes Anstey. And he rolls past us here in the grandstand and whips past a rider who was just coming out of the pits after the second lap pit stop. But Anstey, the Kiwi, is away and he's started his final lap. We'll get to a readout on the scores. That, um, uh, so we wait to see who's going to come through next. And on the far side, well, I think these two Suzuki boys have got a big lead because no other lights are on as yet. So Archibald went through and Anstey went through just then. And uh, just looking at the computer readout, we'll give you those details in just a second. But it looks to me like a 40.3 lead, a 40.3 lead for Archibald over Anstey. That's the one and two. We'll take a break. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. That work then stick to the right as you hit Glen Tramon. On through Milne Town, mind the curb. Top gear across Glen Alden. Flat out to Schoolhouse. One track mind, you can't lose with Bennett's. Bennett's, nothing but bike insurance. Visit bennett's.co.uk. The light is on for number nine, Chris Heath at Cronk Nimona. Uh, he's having a good ride as well. And uh, so Archibald still ahead and uh, Adrian's lap time at the end of lap three, 18 minutes, 39.4. The light is on for Paul Hunt. He'll be coming down Glen Crutchery Road in a few moments from now. 18 minutes, 39.4 seconds, Adrian's lap time for lap three. That's an average speed of 121.34 miles an hour, but that does include the pit stop. It includes the pit stop. Number 78 is pushing in. All sorts of riders having problems with uh, fuel, aren't they? And that's uh, Giorgio Cantalupo on the Aprilia. It made a great noise when it set off, but uh, absolutely dead quiet now as it comes back. And there goes Chris Heath, number nine, stopping the clock at 156 miles an hour as he passes under the footbridge now and beyond our view and the descent down Bray Hill. But the story is all about Suzuki. It's the Taz Suzuki team. And the story is also about Paul Hunt. And here come two riders. And there's number 10. And there is number 15 going through. Applauded on his way by the fire crews watching down there in the pit lane. So terrific performance by 
Paul Hunt, he was right up behind Mark Parrott, Mark Parrott starting in 10, Paul Hunt starting at 15, so he's pulled back an awful lot on the road, and there goes through rider number 17, Gordon Blackley, on the 1000cc uh, Honda CBR with the RAF roundels on the front of the fairing. We can give you a readout now of the top few positions as they start lap four as Gary Carswell goes through. The leader is number one, Adrian Archibald. He has a 40-second advantage over his teammate, Bruce Anstey, who is 41 seconds ahead of Paul Hunt in third place. Now to Motorcycle News, Glenn Helen and Morris. Thank you, Charlie. Adrian Archibald, perfect timing once again. Sweeps it round the left-hander. 28 miles to go to the chequered flag to... Uh, well, duplicate last year's win for Adrian Archibald. A race of changing fortunes, I think one could uh, realistically say, right from the very start, and uh, considerable numbers of retirements, and that somebody's ill fortune is always somebody else's good fortune, and Paul Hunt, with a great ride, is benefiting from that 18. That's Paul Duckett starting in the back of the field, you may remember. Uh, so he's had a lot of traffic uh, to get through, but he's still circulating pretty well. At the moment, it's... Uh, has Suzuki 1-2 and I'm sure they'd be delighted at that and as Andy McLaddery said up there at Ramsey both the Yamaha's out and uh, well it's certainly been a vast attrition rate so let's have a look at uh, some other factors before we get the arrival of Bruce Anstey he should be here any moment 40 seconds I think on starting interval as they mix it of course with some of the later runners that was uh, Duncan Bailey uh, an addition to your programme or a change because Andy Wallace moved up if you recall that was number 77, Duncan Bailey. So he's through on the previous lap. So 40 seconds, the starting time from Adrian Archibald to Bruce Anstey. A further 40 seconds ahead. That's about 1.20. But here is Anstey now. Sweetly round. Behind him, number 80. That's Wade Boyd. And then just uh, looking down. Didn't ca quite catch that one. So it'll be some time before we get to Paul Hunt, of course, here. Uh, but it's not the completion of racing this is lap 4, the completion of racing as far as we're concerned on the mountain circuit but tomorrow we're down at Balaun and lots of your favourites will be down there so those who are staying on let's uh, see you get along there there's two machines into view now these are bound to be the Lake of the Runners I would expect 81 and 83 two of those, Martin Hemberg and Mark Harland we'll give them a mention because yes, uh, we'll be doing the commentary, to, uh, commentary on that for Radio TT with Charlie Williams and myself. And uh, in the paddock will be Chris Kinley as well, as well, as well. But that's Chris. So 28 miles, the only flying lap, remember this one. We have seen number 51, uh, Fabrice Miguet on that Voxen. Uh, silver leathers, a silver machine. Looked a little bit like the Tin Man out of Wizard of Oz, but a fantastic sound and sight to thrill the spectators on which, which has been a great day's racing in pretty well perfect conditions despite the damp this morning the conditions this afternoon have been excellent indeed as seen by that first lap uh, and second lap in fact for that matter set up by John McGuinness before he was uh, an unfortunate departure and a retirement as I say there have been many of those Ian Locker, Jason Griffiths, Ryan Farquhar, Sean Harris so of those numbers that we did mention in uh, well all those Riders that we've mentioned all week long, we've seen the departure of, uh, well, more than a handful of them. But it's Adrian Archibald who leads from Ballymoney in Northern Ireland. Uh, 39 seconds his advantage here. That's one second less, that is, over Bruce Anstey than it was at the grandstand. But a very comfortable lead with some 28 miles of racing to go. Opportunity once again to thank my timekeeper in Turnbull, but I think he'll be uh, called to do some more work in the lap of honour and the classic parade <coughs> number nine Chris Heath still going well like a later one I think it's number 80 I picked that up Wait, oh no it couldn't be Wade Boyd we'd had him through previously number machine 10 86 it was I think that was Mark Parrott going through 86 was the one I missed Scott Stewart as I said my thanks to Ian also uh, Darren our engineer Darren Leeming who's been with us all week and, of course, the marshals around the course, and particularly here at Glen Helen, who are so good to us. The machine of you. Very different. Oh, I don't believe this. Number 15, Paul Hunt, reported touring at Belig. Oh, what a great shame. Number 15, Paul Hunt, reported touring at Belig. That, of course, will mean that, uh, well... 
just trying to think now 14 of course he's got a Carswell he'll move up uh, but yes unfortunate disappointment there I think 14 Gary Carswell has just gone through uh, as we spoke there that will have the uh, well, that will probably slot him into third place so the news from Glen Helen the final time in this senior is number one Arch Archibald who leads by 39 seconds from number five Bruce Anstey yes number 14 Gary Carswell moves up into that third place and number nine as the yellow flag is put out because this is Hunt touring in I think no it is certainly touring in with that back to the motorcycle news grandstand at Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. What better way to finish off a great day's racing than with a great meal? Everyone's welcome at the Paragon Restaurant of the Hilton Hotel and Casino. Choose from the two-course carvery at just $11.95 or tuck into a succulent steak with a selection of sauces at only $14.95. Tempted? Then make sure of your table by calling the Paragon now on 682755. Which venue has the greatest live music lineup this TT? Plus the most exotic shows? The answer's simple. The venue. And with free entry before 10, you know you simply need to get in for the best party night around. The venue, Central Prom Douglas, where great music and good times are all part of the TT experience. De Glen Helen, tant chrono est vérifié en tête le numéro 1, Adrian Archibald, 39 secondes d'avance sur le numéro 5, Bruce Anstey, suivi de près par un manoir numéro 14, Gary Carswell, um, Paul Hunt, um, Touring à Boleg, malheureusement. Ok, Heike. Ja, danke schön. Sensationen oder aber Drama, wie man es auch sieht, die neue, die neue schlechte Nachricht ist, Paul Hunt uh, tourt jetzt auch nicht mehr im Rennen. Also jetzt an erster Stelle von Glen Helen inoffiziell Archibald mit 39 Sekunden Vorsprung auf Nummer 5. Das ist äh, Bruce Anstey. Der wiederum hat einen enormen Vorsprung von 86 Sekunden auf die Nummer 14, Gary Carswell. Zurück an Charlie. Well, the news from uh, Glen Helen, MCN point there, is that uh, Paul Hunt's problem is clutch. It's a clutch problem with Paul Hunt. Desperate, desperate news. An urgent message, Bill Smith to go to, 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 to scrutineering. Bill Smith to scrutineering. Where to MCN Ramsey? As we await uh, Adrian Archibald, no sign of him just, just yet. Well, what, a, what an amazing day. Uh, no, we got a uh, <laughs> false alarm. That's your fault, I've got Ian Locker in the box with me. When, when we get a second, uh, when we get the first few through, we'll let Ian explain... Uh, what his problems were as Adrian Archibald does come into view final lap for Adrian Archibald in the lead oh very slow and steady around the hairpin that's the slowest I've seen him around here all day not a bike problem just uh, to uh, not to alert all his uh, mechanics and friends and followers I don't think he has a bike problem but he was very very steady around here I'm sure Adrian's been looking at his boards and all he knows all he has to do is coax it now up to the top of the mountain and then down the other side and home for an, another victory and it will be some relief to Adrian because he hasn't had a great TT at all certainly not by his standards uh, by other people's standards he's had a fantastic time but Adrian has very high standards and uh, basically if he doesn't win he hasn't done well and, and he, this will be assuming he gets home first his first victory of the week and a well deserved one too we're waiting for probably Bruce Anstey to come through next we hope we're getting some of the later runners through uh, that's actually number 18 who was started uh, Paul Duckett he started from the back um, we obviously don't have a time on Paul but looking down at some of the, the machinery that's been going through as we wait for Bruce Anstey if you keep your eyes open for Paul, Paul Owen number 55 uh, I haven't seen him this lap but certainly last lap we heard, oh, we didn't see him as much as hear him it's the last ever two stroke you probably hear as in the sight comes Bruce Anstey a lot faster approach from Bruce he's obviously seen his board maybe seen the times dropping he's still on it he's still trying to wave to the crowd there I think his signalman's just around the corner so it could be a wave to his signalman there so the two Taz Suzuki safely through here on the final lap at Ramsey so just 13 and three quarter miles to go for both the Taz Suzuki's and Adrian Archibald holds a 32 second advantage over Bruce Anstey so basically barring any mishap machine failure uh, running out of petrol and one of the other 2000 things that can go wrong it's Archibald from Anstey 1-2 we maybe just have a quick word with Ian and he can explain what exactly uh, went wrong with his machine Ian Locker yeah Randy uh, just disappointed there you know uh, broke down a battery or something has gone and uh, it's uh, just disappointed for my, my team or anybody else they put so much hard work into it Mark Johns Bob Campbell and all Martin and David and all the rest of the guys it's been brilliant this week it's just, just such a shame you know disappointed 
you could see the disappointment because what you were banging the tank of course in front of us and then push the bike behind and then i could see you walk off and distraught lent over the hedge i mean it, it is such a big event and, and a, the la your last chance of victory of course this week um you you obviously feel it feel it about in the heart yeah it's just been a terrible week for us this year uh, you know nothing has seemed to have gone right and you know, I fell off the other day, and then uh, the production back then earlier on was sort of cutting out on slow corners, and I'd keep turning the ignition off and turn it back on again, and eventually drop back and finish fifth. So, uh, just been just been disappointing, and everything we seem to have done seems to have made us go backwards somehow. But um, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you just got to carry on, you know. What about conditions out on the circuit? Is it still damp under the trees? No, no, it's pretty good. Um, it's dry everywhere, but yeah, everywhere it's just windy and blustery and. You know, just very blustery on on the mountain other right? it was good conditions you know ok thanks Ian sorry to uh, burden you with that in your, in your moment of distress I'm sure I know Ian well and he, he'll, he'll bounce back he, he's down but he's not out that's a certainty so we await the next riders through of course a big gap now um, uh, in fact I can't even think who's going to slot into third now As a, ah here we go Chris Heath in fact Ah, right. Gary Carswell, I think, is going to slot in third as Chris Heath comes round aboard his Honda. Chris Heath taking a fine line out. Lovely big wheelie on the exit. And here, in fact, comes number 10, Mark Parrott. Mark Parrott, beautiful. Another one that's got it really all on the deck here. Some of the guys keep it fairly upright and try and get the power down early. And other guys just slam it on the side, on their knee. Footrest just about scraping the ground and fire it round that hairpin. As we await Gary Carswell, he'll be through in... Uh, no, there is Martin Finnegan. Yeah, lovely big broadside. Excellent work by Martin Finnegan. Beautiful. Now, he's pulled out on Gary Carswell, I think, because if I recall the last lap, Gary Carswell was on the road, was very close to Martin Finnegan. So, has Gary dropped back? Has Martin moved up? It's hard to say at this point. We're just looking for times yet. Well, he's Gary Carswell, so I guess he's still got that advantage, but it's not as much as it was. Uh, but Gary Carswell looks very quick, very smooth. He's another one that's consistent around the hairpin. You, can, you could draw the line for Gary Carswell, too, because he takes the same lap, uh, same line lap after lap after lap and never de deviates. As another one comes into view, I think this is one of the lapped riders. Yes, it is, number 86. Well, we can't give you too many times this ta this lap because they're spread out uh, greatly. But it's a Taz Suzuki, Adrian Archibald, number one, holds a 30-second advantage in the lead from Bruce Anstey, number five, second place, who holds one minute 30 seconds over Gary Carswell in third place. He, in turn, holds a two-second lead over equal Parrot and Finnegan, equal, and they're one second ahead of Chris Heath. So it's going to be a, it's going to be heck Back to the MCN Grandstand. At Standard Bank, we're committed to the island's community. We're proud to sponsor this year's Senior TT. If you want a global bank that thinks local, Standard Bank has the answer. Out on your bike? Don't raise the odds against your safety. Take a risk overtaking or stray on the wrong side of the road and you might as well be playing Russian roulette. You're gambling with your life. You could be gambling with someone else's. Remember, slow down, roads bite back. Well, it's all about the Taz Suzuki boys at the top of the field, but it's also a terrific scrap going on for that third place on the podium between Carswell, Parrott, Finnegan and Heath. There's just three seconds separating those four riders as they hurtle across the mountain. So if you're watching in the Cregney Bar area or at Hillbury, stand by. You're going to see some terrific motorcycle sport over the next few minutes. But what about Gary Carswell, 35 years of age? He's never finished higher than eighth in a TT here on his home island uh, and that was in the Prodi 1000 but the light is on for Adrian Archibald. The light is on for Adrian Archibald on the Taz Suzuki, the man from Ballymoney who won this event last year for the same colours, the Temple Auto Salvage Suzuki GSXR 1000. Adrian who was runner up to John McGuinness in the Formula 1 last Saturday. Since then it's been a pretty disappointing time for him fifth in the Prodi 1000, then retiring at Bishop's Court in the Junior TT and ninth in the Prodi 600 this morning. We wondered if he'd left his gunpowder at home this year, but the answer is an emphatic no. Adrian Archibald is steaming towards victory. He'll be on his way down towards the foot of Governor's Dip. Nice and careful, no mistakes now, as we look up Glen Crutchery Road. Everybody in the grandstand poised, and here he comes. Adrian Archibald takes the chequered flag. It's back number one, it's man number one the senior TT is won once again by Adrian Archibald, a wonderful performance 
he was there to take advantage when John McGuinness fell by the wayside when Ian Locker went adrift there were no mistakes at all it's a team event and that is what counted nobody ever said it would be easy to win the Isle of Man Senior TT and Adrian Archibald has succeeded the Taz Suzuki team has succeeded where the others failed we wait for Bruce Anstey to cross the line in second place the final lap time then for Adrian Archibald 18 minutes 28.8 seconds that was the final lap time at an average speed of 122.5 miles an hour 122.5 miles an hour so the uh, lap record uh, remains intact the race record held by David Jeffries but the winner of the senior is now with Chris Kinley senior winner last year the senior winner again in 2004 and uh, let's let him take his helmet off the gloves are thrown to the front of the body he's got to wrench his helmet off his head there we go and he's not had the best of luck he's, he's been consistent all week but hey he was there when it mattered lots of people going out Locker went out McGuinness went out but you've got to be there at the end to take the win and, and well done Adrian yeah that's right you know uh, obviously John had caught me in the road and then after the pit stop I didn't know whether he was out in front of me or behind me, it was all mixed up. And then I got P1 on the board, and then I seen Ian went out. And, oh, just the TAS is like he was running brilliant the whole race, you know, it never missed a beating. It's got me here at the end. Bruce second. Right, right. Just I didn't, to be confirmed, but Bruce is second so yeah. far. Didn't even know who you were saying. <laughs> John McGuinness went out of Kurt Michael Lane, Lock went out of Ramsey Hairpin as well. And we might have having a Manx fella in third. Right. <laughs> but you must be pleased with that. Melanie as well just run down as well. But of course, yeah, you, but you win the Joey Dunlop trophy as well again. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's say it's unfortunate for John, but uh, I suppose that's the way it goes right in the TT. But uh, it's a good end for me to a pretty tricky week. <laughs> well done, Adrian. Congratulations. Right, thanks. There we go. So first place, well done. Sorry, we'll just let all the family get in there. Let's go in and have a word with Bruce. If I can just uh, get through the scrum here, and there's people absolutely <laughs> everywhere. There's good ladies there as well. And a second place, a one-two for the TAS team, and a second place for, uh, for Bruce again. Gets the gloves off. He doesn't seem that all puffed in. He's probably going to go back to the caravan for a bit of a sleep now before he goes out a little bit later on. But he got his foot down. You've got to be there, like I said to Adrian at the end, to get the result. And a second place. Let's take the lid off. Do you want a drink? Get your hat on. Let's get the sponsor's hat on. Well done, Bruce. A second place behind Adrian yeah sort of I'm happy with that sort of I've been struggling with the bike with vibration all oh you've got blisters all on your hand as if you've been working hard with a with a hammer or something like that what's caused that it's just I don't know what's got a problem with vibration through the handlebars and it's just I was almost ready to stop on that second lap I thought oh. well I'll just carry on and see how it goes and then slowly everyone was dropping out I thought oh, okay keep going yeah so sort of sort of bit of luck in the end so but a no, a good win, though, by, by by about 40 odd seconds, I would say, I think it was. But, uh, you know, if you've got a problem like that, you're just hanging on. Yeah, just sort of hanging on for dear life, really. <laughs> a good week, though, superb week. Yeah, no, it's on the podium all week, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. Excellent, Bruce. Thank you very much for talking to us. Go and enjoy the task night tonight. Cool, thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce Anstey there. So there's your one-two, Agent Archibald and also Bruce Anstey. While we're waiting for third place, Charlie, do you have any time for these guys? Okay. No, uh, yes, we can tell you that uh, Archibald won by 30.2 seconds ahead of Anstey. So Adrian Archibald, the winner of the senior, by 30.2 seconds ahead of Bruce Anstey. But the main focus now is who is going to take that third spot on the podium. And the light is on for... Gary Carswell, number 14. Gary Carswell, number 14. His mum is a marshal out there at Corey Benz. I can just imagine what must be going through her mind because the boy's done good today, but let's see, can he bring it home in for third place? Gary Carswell, never been on the podium yet as we look down Lane Country Road and he comes past and he passes in front of us now. He takes the check and flag. The seagulls fly up in alarm and Gary Carswell looks very calm indeed as he coasts in towards the return lane, but we'll just need to check on the times of the others around him as well because Martin Finnegan was right up there as well as was Chris Heath but it looks like he's done it it looks like he's done it looking at the computer readout we have in third place number 14 Gary Carswell has got third place he is on the podium and he's finished a minute and 25 behind Bruce Anstey he won't care about that he's in third place and we go down to Chris
third place uh, yeah hello there Gary Carswell has got third place come on here Gary I tell you what this fella's been trying he won the senior Manx a few years ago and if you can see the big smile on his face there's his good lady goes in all the photographers are in on the HM Sports motorhome machine Hugh Murphy showing the faith in Gary at the uh, beginning of this year and Gary Carswell a Manx fella from Mackle of course he gets his third place and of course winning the senior Manx there not so long ago now coming into the holding area hopefully this is the first of many and Gary take your gloves off guns have you given her a kiss yet? You want to give her a kiss before you talk to me? Take your lid off first. Here comes the boy. He jumps all over the top of him. Oh, this could be an Arsenal moment at Wembley a few years ago. So you hope you're picking this up in the background. Absolutely. Hell on there now. <laughs> all right, so we better be careful now, boys. You are live on the radio here. So let him get his gloves off and save for the moment. Tim Glover comes in to say congratulations. We've been following him right the way through since he got this ride with Hugh. And, of course, he's been taking it nice and steady on the roads at Tandragee, Cookstown, and also the Northwest 200. But Gary Carswell, the first time in here since the Senior Manx Grand Prix a few years ago and third place in the Senior TT. Yes, sir. How about that? Oh, that's fantastic. It's totally unbelievable. I wasn't expecting anywhere near that. I just rode the wheels off the bike as hard as I could. Mm -hmm. I just want to say a big thank you to Hugh for what he's done for me this year. He's given me a fantastic ride for the TT. He's really looked after me this year, so thanks a lot to you, good man. You haven't given her a kiss yet. You better go and do that or you'll be in big trouble. Big H was in third for a little while. Machine problems for Big H, and I tell you, there wasn't much between you, uh, Mark Parrott, uh, also Martin Finnegan, and also Chris Heath. There wasn't much between you lot, but you grabbed it. How, how does it feel? Oh, it's amazing. When I saw that, I got a board at, uh, I think it was Balacrain, saying position three. I couldn't believe it. And then I, I noticed H was touring through Glen Helen. So... Uh, I, I had a good idea it might have been him that was ahead of me on the road there so uh, this is brilliant <laughs> night out in Ramsey tonight oh no we've got to get the bikes ready for tomorrow oh you're down in Balan, but you're going <laughs> to have one or two for tonight though I reckon I think so I uh, definitely well done Gary go and enjoy it okay mate yes, thank there you go. Gary Carswell uh, in third place let's go over to Morris Morsley at Glen Helen who's got Paul Hunt with him Morris Yes, thanks, uh, Chris. Yes, uh, Gary Carswell, that's a fantastic third place, but a place that was held by the man who's standing next to me, uh, Paul Hunt, and disappointment for him, but uh, a great race nonetheless. Paul, what happened? Uh, clutch went, uh, coming out of Bella Crane. It's one of them things, brand new clutch in the bike. What do you do? Going to have to get more clutch plates, maybe. <laughs> but Ian tells me you were, what, 18.50? 18.15, lap to lap here. Pretty good, though. That's not bad here, here. It's around about what Milky's doing. That's the one I was after, but um, probably haven't done it. The little bug has got me again. I said before we went to there, I said to Paul, be careful what you say, but well, that's not too bad, is it, really? But obviously, you've had a good week, really. You, you, you don't seem too disappointed. Most of them seem down. No, at the end of the day, it's going to be a race, isn't it? Um, enjoying it. Um, I'm going to finish third. It's going to be very nice. Uh, good one for Gary. I hope he's going to get me a pint for inherent third, then. I think you've already got that pint here. We've been talking about the refreshments we get, but uh, Big H came up here with a pint in his hand. He's enjoying that, but he's, he's had a good race and not too disappointed. Uh, and once again, thanks to Gary. Yeah, yeah well done, Gary, mate. I want a pint in the beer tent. Thank you very much indeed. That's uh, Boris Morsley here at Glen Helen. We're going back to the motorcycle news grandstand. Morris, thank you very much indeed. Well, terrific stuff. And Gary Carswell, I think it just shows how determined he was to make sure that he got both his feet on that podium when you realise that when they left MCN Ramsey hairpin, he only had the two-second advantage over Mark Parrott and Martin Finnegan, who were close on his tail, uh, and he managed to build that up to a 6.6 .6 advantage over Mark Parrott by the time they got back to us here at the grandstand. So he must have absolutely given it full licks over the mountain, Gary Carswell. No way was he going to let that prize get away from him. As Chris was saying, he's had big support this year from the HM Sports Motorhome setup. So as well as being a victory for the Isle of Man, it's also a victory for Ballymena, where Hugh Murphy and his business are based. Uh, Hugh is uh, an ex-racer himself, although I think this is the first time he's been involved in the TT. So uh, it's lovely to see people getting the success that they deserve. So Gary, having got uh, a bronze in the Formula One, and also a bronze in the junior. He picked up a silver in the proddy, but this time he is on the podium for celebrations in third place. And that uh, preparation, which uh, he's been doing with the full Irish programme so far, really has paid off. What about the man in second place, Bruce Anstey? Well, he's got used to finishing in second place. 
uh, during the TT this time. He was, of course, second today in the production uh, 600 earlier on. He was runner-up in the junior 600 as well to John McGuinness. He took third place in the Formula One, but of course he does have a win to celebrate as well with the Proddy 1000 on Tuesday. So it's not been a bad week's work for Bruce Anstey, the man now based at Windsor but born in Wellington, New Zealand. But uh, congratulations, of course, are due to Adrian Archibald, the man who finished as he started at number one. So a resume of what's been a dramatic uh, event with Heike and Mavis. Merci Charlie, quel drame, Pff, ça décoiffe, hein? Le vainqueur de la le senior comme l'année dernière, numéro 1, Adrian Archibald, 1 heure, 13 minutes, 08 secondes. Numéro 1, Adrian Archibald, 1 heure, 13 minutes, 8 secondes. En deuxième, le numéro 5, Bruce Anstey, 1 heure, 13 minutes, 38 secondes. Euh, en troisième, le manois, le numéro 14, Gary Carswell, 1 heure, 15 minutes et 3 secondes. Heike. Ja, danke schön. So kommt also das letzte große Rennen äh, unseres CT-Festivals zum Ende. Und nun ja, vielleicht hat es keine Rekorde gegeben, keine großartigen Sensationen, aber Dramatik hoch drei. Dramatik, die sich wirklich gelohnt hat. Sicher mit einem weinenden und einem lachenden Auge für manchen. Aber hier ist es also an erster Stelle und Gewinner der Senior TT äh, Rennen äh, 2004 ist Adrian Archibald mit einer Gesamtzeit von einer Stunde 13 Minuten 8,1 Sekunden. Und das sind 30,2 Sekunden Vorsprung auf den Zweitplatzierten Bruce Amstey, die Startnummer 5 aus Neuseeland. Und der wiederum mit einer Minute 25 Sekunden Vorsprung auf den Drittplatzierten. Und da ähm, klingen hier die Glöckchen, denn natürlich ein Lokalmatador, Gary Carswell von der Inselmann, hat es geschafft, die Startnummer 14, nachdem wir zunächst gehofft hatten, dass Paul Hunt Nummer 15 es schaffen würde, der dann aber leider ausgeschieden ist in der letzten Runde, aber trotzdem noch ein Podiums, äh, ein Treppchen, das dritte Treppchen für die Inselmann. Und damit zurück an Charlie. Hi, Kerr, vielen Dank. As the riders continue to finish, I'll give you a rundown of the full top ten uh, from that uh, senior in just a moment. But, uh, well, what a day for Suzuki. First, second and third. A very special performance indeed. They haven't had it all their own way this time round the mountain circuit, but they've certainly come good right at the finish. So before the podium ceremony takes place, with a reminder that, of course, we do still have the classic parade, and that will be off at a quarter past three. The classic parade will be off at quarter past three. Full coverage here on Radio TT. And even when that is over, that's not the end of our broadcasting of TT 2004, because we're staying on the air throughout tomorrow, and there'll be full live coverage of the Steam Packet events down at Bilown tomorrow. So this is how things finish regarding the top ten, and there are a couple of very special performances as well uh, in, uh, in seventh and ninth places, so listen out for those. But the winner, number one, Adrian Archibald, 30.2 seconds ahead of Bruce Anstey. Anstey, number five, in second place, one minute and 25 seconds ahead of the man in third place, Gary Carswell, on bike number 14. Gary Carswell, 6.6 seconds ahead of Mark Parrott in fourth. Mark Parrott, 0.8 seconds ahead of number 12, Martin Finnegan, in fifth. Martin Finnegan had an 11.4 second advantage over the man in sixth place, that's Chris Heath. And Chris Heath was just 2.8 seconds ahead of Guy Martin in seventh. Guy Martin beginning at number 29 on the road, a newcomer. It's his debut here at the TT on the GSXR Suzuki from Derry in Northern Ireland. So a wonderful performance by him. Congratulations to Guy Martin. And he was 35.1 seconds ahead of, in eighth place, number 17, Gordon Blackley on the Honda. And Gordon, 20.4 seconds ahead of, in ninth place, number 44, David Bell. So a terrific performance by David from uh, Andy McGladdery country, I think, up there in, in the northeast, Chesterley Street. So well done to him on the Suzuki. And David Bell, 11.9 seconds ahead of the 10th place finisher, and that was number 24, Ian Armstrong on the Yamaha. That's the way the top 10 looked 
at the end of lap four, at the end of the senior. So our congratulations, of course, go to Adrian Archibald, who picks up £18,300 for his efforts this afternoon. Uh, we'll give you some, uh, some more of the significant finishes as well when we have them. Uh, and also, of course, there are special prizes for the 250ccs, the 600ccs, and the 750s. Uh, there was only Paul Owen who qualified for the 250s on his Honda. He has to finish in replica time in order to pick up his special prize. Well, the bikes are on their way up for the presentation in front of the podium, and it's Gary Carswell Suzuki that's being wheeled up first, number 14. And it's, I must say, it is, uh, it's lovely to see Gary getting some reward and also his sponsor getting reward for all the effort that they've put in this year. They really have been taking this road racing exceptionally seriously, and uh, it's all paid off today. Of course, uh, big bad luck to Paul Hunt, who looked as if he was set for that third place but as I mentioned earlier on nobody ever said it was easy to win the senior TT here around the Isle of Man but Adrian Archibald doing it for the second time running has marked himself out as being a mega star here on the Isle of Man and here comes his bike now with uh, Bruce Anstey's as well being pushed up and uh, the riders will be making their way up in a few moments time for the final presentation of TT 2004, the garlanding ceremony to be conducted by Richard Corkill, the Chief Minister of the Isle of Man Government. And uh, don't forget, of course, that the event is sponsored by Standard Bank Offshore. The bike's being manoeuvred into position. It's been a very eventful senior TT with John McGuinness going off like a train early on, opening up uh, an advantage, first of all, over Ian Locker. Then when Locker was overtaken by Archibald, McGuinness forging ahead and forging ahead. And he was at one stage 21 seconds ahead when they came into the pits at the end of lap two with John McGuinness. But then it all began to go pear-shaped for him the first time this week that really anything has gone badly amiss. And and unfortunately, he bowed out at Kirk Michael on lap three with clutch problems. Well, that allowed Adrian Archibald to get into the lead, which he did. And after that, there was no stopping the man on the Suzuki. I say a big thank you, well done, and a big pat on the back to the marshals out at Balig. They've collected over £2,000 for the helicopter fund during the TT. And I will mention it again at the close of our broadcasting, but uh, I'll do so now. Uh, a big thank you all round to the marshals for their assistance during practice and the races. And that message comes from the chairman of the TT Marshals Association. So it wasn't just the first place here which uh, saw problems for leading people. Ian Locker, as we heard, being interviewed out there at Ramsey. He was uh, also one that fell by the wayside. But all that's history. It's all about the three who are on their way to the podium, and we will have the fanfare. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have before us now on the podium the top three riders from the Standard Bank Offshore Senior TT, and the garlanding ceremony is about to take place. In third place from the Isle of Man on a Suzuki, Gary Carswell. In second place on a Suzuki from New Zealand, Bruce Anstey. And the winner of the senior TT on a Suzuki from Northern Ireland, Adrian Archibald. And as the garland is placed around his neck, we will have the national anthem of the United Kingdom.
while everybody was saying what has happened to the Irish at this TT, what's happened to the famed luck, I think we've had the answer. They were saving the best for last because we've had Ryan Farquhar winning this morning on the Kawasaki and now Adrian Archibald on the Suzuki. And the champagne has been presented and beating a sensible retreat is the Chief Minister <laughs> as the corks are about to come off the bottle we hope they're having a bit of a problem with it but Anstey is first Anstey is first off the blocks he's giving them all a good dowsing and there's Gary Carswell and he sent that cork flying I think that was a world record as well terrific distance on that so the champagne is spraying up there on the senior TT podium and at long long last Adrian Archibald has got going as well so they're having a right good champagne shampoo up there and well lovely moments here in Douglas at the end of the senior TT. It's been a dramatic race, it's been an eventful race. In the end, it was won in some style by Adrian Archibald, but what a day's racing we have seen with such a tight event this morning, the Proddy 600, and then the Tao Suzuki boys coming good in the senior this afternoon. So they now make their way down from the podium. Um, just looking to see if we've got final results then from outside the top 10 that we can give you uh, and I think we can as riders continue to finish so I've given you the top 10 already so I'll resume with rider number 11 and that right sorry about that just uh, Norman's just pointing me in the correct direction right so in 11th place was number 41 Yun Maida in 12th was number 27 Chris Palmer 13th was number 20 Nigel Beatty 14th was number 36 Andy Wallace and in 15th place number 30 Alex Donaldson so those are the top 15. 